the sun might be alive. It's a big week for the sun. Uh, the eclipse coming. School's getting canceled. Back in my day, we went to uh, the, the snow, three feet of snow, we'd be in school. Uh, the sun, sun was out all the time. You know what I mean? The moon sometimes would interject. The earth would get in the way of the, the sun. These kids these days, too soft. What's the sun? Did the sun do a thing or did the sun not do a thing? Well, so the by the time people see this, or they won't see it because the, the eclipse is going to kill us all. I'm... I've, I've, I feel like we've had eclipses before. I don't remember this much hullabaloo surrounding the eclipse. Uh, but the thing I was ta- going to talk about at the end of last week after our four hours of talking, and I was like, I don't know that this is the time to bring it up. Uh, there are a group of, of scientists, like legitimate, that got the sheet of paper. You know what I mean? These aren't just people who paid for a blue check. Uh, (laughs) These are real scientists. They believe the sun has a conscious. Tell me more. There's not much more to say because (laughs) they they can't, like, go prove it. Now, we do have a probe that is currently at the sun, which has me asking a lot of questions about how hot this sun actually could be. But that's a different conversation for a different day. They think the sun is conscious in the sense that, like, it may know when to flare, when to send these, you know, these things are like miles long. (laughs) They can really fuck up. Passive aggressive sun. Yeah. Like, (laughs) is it a friendly sun? So they're, it's some people are, are putting some, some stock into these days. And listen, I, if we have to go back, like way back in time, not 20, 30 years, like hundreds, thousands of years back to worshiping mother, son, I'm down. I'm very down for that. Some of us never stopped. Uh, uh, <laughs> Real believers. Oh, oh gracious, yellow one. Uh, what, but if, if the sun has a con, then like now what? Like what are we supposed to do with this information? What are we supposed to? Yeah, supposed bills to are the, still due. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta eat like I gotta eat. Yeah, I think it's just uh, like I didn't. I've been living thirty four odd years now, not considering the sun's, you know, day to day. Like, he clocks in, he clocks out, he does his job, I respect it. Now, if, like, I have to consider, we, we can't piss off the sun. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Again, if you always were worshipping the sun, like some of us have been, <laughs> you would always be operating, like, I don't want to be on the sun's bad side, ever. Mm-mm. I get it every summer, and I don't even know if that's, like, the, the bad, the worst side of it. So again, this is this feels like aliens. Like you just hope the sun comes with good tidings, because if not, if you had to pick a side, sun or aliens. Oh man, I'm rolling with the the sun's been here day one. You know what I mean? I these the Johnny sun? come latelys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn Johnny come. I don't like. I don't care what kind of uh sweet sounds these siren aliens are, are singing to me i'm i'm staying with with home team it's only one son though <sighs> yeah that's exactly i don't know this is like uh you have a horse sized son or an <laughs> alien sized horse <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah i'm 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 team son long documented uh, a friend of the sun. Sun's been beating my ass for many moons now. <laughs> Does the sun have any competitors? I know. I, and, and all this other talk of like other galaxies. And again, y'all, I know y'all will correct me. I don't remember mention of like, no, there's other suns too. Or do we even know? I don't want to get too in the weeds. The sun is just a star. I say that with respect, again, to oh, the sun. Oh, hey, yeah, okay. <laughs> this, this, the, whatever the sun watches, like, on in the barbershop, this clip just play. I, he's just a star. Is he a system player? <laughs> Can the sun go out and get it? Is he, is he a bus rider? Or is he a bus driver, Kenny? Yeah, they call it the solar system. They built it around the sun. It's Tom Brady of this Milky Way galaxy. Stop it. Yeah, so I don't they know. won before the sun, they won after the sun. No, no, they didn't, you dummy. <laughs> I don't 
Like, I don't know if every star is the same, to your point. Right. I don't know if they're all big cooking. I know there was also recent news. This is a science show, by the way. And not a well-informed one, either. There was also <laughs> science. <laughs> yeah, people know science. <laughs> was, there was also uh, findings of another planet, like, light years away, but, like, was giving off electricity. They were like... they. People might be there cooking, like people. That, like, that's, no, it was like a planet, so I don't know, like what system mm-hmm. it was in, but they were like, yeah, we detect electricity, which is I know they're always looking for water. Electricity was a new one. Nah, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> that's just one of those like, <laughs> if I'm working that night, everybody that detected that is like, no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we just like turn turn the the rays a little bit the other way. You didn't see nothing. You didn't see nothing. You didn't see nothing. You didn't see nothing. And then we all clock out. Get out of there. Yeah. Space is terrifying. But shout out the Parker Solar Probe. That's what's currently right next to the sun. Hurtling through space at 450,000 miles per hour. (laughs) Booking it. (laughs) Real wheels. I was reading it. I was like, surely that's a misprint. Surely that's incorrect. Hate to forget your keys. Uh, That's a Nissan Altima. Uh, I see those on the highway every so often. Oh four, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Door different color than the rest of the the vehicle. Bubble lights, uh, scrubs on the driver. Thirty minutes late. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know the type. But yeah, it's big eclipse hours. Uh, can't wait for the nothing to happen. I know we're launching like three different rockets just to see. To see if something happens? Yeah, I, I guess they're trying to study like... Right, and the people who actually know what's going on are like, I can't with these fucking morons. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> different, like I want to say gamma rays. That's probably wrong. But different gamma rays get released during an eclipse. I don't see of how. Course. You know what I mean? I really don't understand why that would be the case. Every Everyone's still just doing their job up there. I don't necessarily know why anything else would happen. Yeah, what's the big deal? It's just dark for like five minutes at 3.30 tomorrow where I am. There's a, the other part I don't understand, it like starts in Mexico, ends in Maine. What does that mean? What? <laughs> this is how we find out time zones were never real. Never really right. existed. <laughs> I don't like it sounds like any of this. No, no, but that was... That was big sun talk. Sun might be conscious and actively making decisions that we have no say over. Like, none. Literally none. I mean, we... feel like this shouldn't change our life. Like, we had as much power before as we, as we do now to change our daily lives in no way. We should all pray to the sun every morning. Yeah. As some of us <laughs> have been. Uh and go on about our day. Sun just crossing its arms. Easter. I remember that guy. That guy was yeah. trash. Oh man, good times. <laughs> yeah. Memory lane. The other random thought I had that I also meant to bring up last episode. I think pancakes are back in a way that I never thought I would feel about pancakes ever in my life. You put this on the the docket. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. listening. So I've been an ardent uh, French toast fan forever recently and i've given this about two three years now but when i go out and order french toast i can't remember the last time someone gave me like an edible french toast let alone like good baseline good Mm -mm. i'm talking multiple states different times of the year it's been horrible the 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 ft i've been experiencing out i think they've they've gotten a little adventurous i'll agree Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Compotes, all sorts of nonsense being put on top. I just make it out of different. It's like this is a the end of a couch cushion. Uh, it's like y'all don't y'all don't have a chala or brioche. Y'all don't, y'all don't, okay. Yeah, why are yeah. we reinventing the, the French yeah. toast wheel? I yeah no yeah put the cinnamon drizzle on it on the the on buttons part I guess of the couch cushion and so recently like waffle waffle steady Eddie I haven't seen anyone trying to fuck around with a waffle anytime recently that's that's all reliable but I know since I know what waffles been doing I've been dipping my toe back into the pancake game I feel like they've stepped up their game they're not as thin as I remember they're holding syrup a little bit better than they used to back in the nineties. 
I don't know what's been going on, but I'm 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 back on pancakes at the moment. Now, have they overtaken number one, or are they just like a rising prospect? Is, I this, think is right, this the number one contender, or has it has it knocked out the champ? I think Waffle right now is at the top for me. Like if I if I had to just pick between the three, yeah, it's just consistent. I've, yeah. I've yet to have a bad one. So, but like French toast still reigns supreme when it shows up, when it decides it wants to play. <laughs> Randy French toast malls. <laughs> but it's like if like I have to control, I have I have to make it myself these days if I want the right French toast. You know what I mean? Like I can't just go to a place and order it like I used to be able to. That's I will say a waffle has been as I have a, a waffle maker and not a pancake or French toast maker. So if I just <laughs> in the mood is like gonna be a waffle. The French it has gotten adventurous. I will say a a, a nod in pancakes favor. Do y'all have Jenny's ice cream up that way? Uh, I've had it before. It's not like everywhere, but I've had it before. They got a I think it's called maple soaked pancakes. Real bits of pancake. It's a bad bitty. In the cream. In the it's a let me see y'all was in it. Uh I think it's just called maybe no no free ads, but if Jenny wants to send me like a, a <laughs> wheelbarrow of this stuff. <laughs> Fluffy pancakes and salted butter and maple syrup creams. So that you get like the taste of the syrup, but it's not too much. The butter's just like there to to bind, really, mm-hmm. and then you get the bits of the pancake. <sighs> now Jenny did her, she did her big one. I fear. Are you eating that raw? Or are you putting uh, a syrup of any kind on that? Nah, you know I, raw from the back. Uh, I, eat, I eat it from the bottom of the carton. I'm a freak. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I leave the lid on. Yeah, <laughs> pen knife. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they'll hear us. Hey, yeah, if we're sticking with big cream, I've had this thought as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Van Leeuwen Company, the one that makes like the ranch ice cream and stuff right. like that, when they're not on uh, Demon Time, when they do that that kind of <laughs> stuff, I don't know if there's a company alive right now that understands flavor as much as them. I think it's why they can do like the mac and cheese and ranch stuff just to grab the headlines because everything else they make i was at walmart the other day they've always got everything with sugar in it mm-hmm. i'm looking at the freezer i saw they had a king cake ice cream and i was like I- i'll eat this and i sure did i ate the whole pint in one sitting so i was like this is mm-hmm. unbelievable this <laughs> and i get a-, a cookie butter in the freezer as we speak and i know that's gonna taste like a thousand out of ten no nah, ice cream is so bad dude <laughs> i'm so <laughs> House is ice cream. Is ice cream back? You talk about sweets that never went anywhere. <laughs> oh, buddy. 99 overall for the last 18 years. And it's coming up on warmer weather. Well, for some places, warmer weather. Though ice cream in the cold does also hit. I, I must crazy. report. crazy. I must report. <laughs> I love standing out in the cold. Brewster's or something getting run into the cars. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is great. It's... I don't know. I don't want to say better because it's good year round, but it, mm. there's something about a, a winter cream that really hits the spot. I will say also, I might have to test this again. Hot chocolate also in the summer. Okay. All right. Cut is fine. <laughs> Listen, it's still hot chocolate. You understand? It is. It is. It's still delicious. Mm-hmm. It also, it like you, I wouldn't do it on a 105 degree day, but a <laughs> 90, a 96. A little yeah. something with the with the wind blowing, uh, long nice pant breeze. weather. Yeah. yeah, long pant weather. Capri and a hot ch- hot chalky. hot cocoa uh, and a cupcake. Uh, uh, the whiskers, as they call it, yeah. 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 on Nantucket. Yeah, that's that's what they that's what they do. Yeah, I can see that, especially like a New England night. In the summer, it may as well be fall. So I could see it then. I'm like, telling you, and you ain't had it in a while. You, like you used to, used to ice cream in the summer. You used to hot chocolate when it's cold. Get you that hot chocolate when it's about eighty. Like people drink hot coffee or addicted to it at all sure, temperatures, sure. times of the day. So a little hot cocoa or hot chocolate in the summer. Start that day off right with 147 milligrams of hot sugar. 
I think I'm just overall mostly out on hot beverages. Now, I'll do a tea. I'm not here to insult you. I was going to say, careful. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Talk here to Talk to the big steeper here. <laughs> I'm not here to insult you. Tea, though, is like hot coffee, horrible. I know I just took a swig of iced coffee like an adult, but hot coffee is absurd. And hot chocolate, it's good. I have no qualms with hot chocolate, but if I, if I could only have that or chocolate milk the rest of my life, give me the chocolate milk. Because you, you just let hot chocolate run cold and you got chocolate. Essentially the same. I got two in one. Nah, give me the hot stuff. You're a sick man. Nah, because I ain't drink. Nah, I, I'll buy my own milk and make it. I don't trust that pre-made chop. You don't know what they, your own brother sell you some dust. So I'm not... <laughs> I'm not buying like the the big brand hot chocolate. I typically do make it myself, but moving up here, since I've moved to Maine, there's a lot of like, uh, local milkers, uh, real, real teat yankers as we like to call them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And they've got their own, I believe it's smiling cow farm. They've got their own chocolate milk that you talk about a thick bitch, like Nelly Furtado walking out on that stage. <laughs> Say, man. I said, when did that occur? She was not built like that in 05. I promise, <laughs> I promise you. No. I would have remembered. I, I, know, I, 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 know, I, I know I would have. <laughs> I never forget. I never forget. I, you was not like a bird. You was, you was like a horse when I seen you most recently. Respectfully. Yeah, that bone structure would not be able to take flight. Those no, are... it's, it's uh, <laughs> the picture of Bonds in, in Pittsburgh and the picture of Bonds <laughs> in San Francisco. I say, hey, man, I don't care how the game is played, honestly, but one of these players is better than, <laughs> than the other. I'm just here to sock dingers. I don't yeah, I, just, <laughs> I just love the sport. Listen, she's been out of the public eye for a while. She's doing uh, uh, Those days opposite, are over. The yeah. opposite of Ozempic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's... What's the market for that? I'm in- inquire- inquiring minds would like to know. Because yeah. <laughs> oh, I want it off my streets. <laughs> you, t- you tell me where I can find Nelly for title to, uh, to tell her right to her face. Enough. Over a drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, get in here. Where the yeah. Prying eyes can't see. Yeah. <laughs> you know TMZ is out there. You call- They said you called them. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I could need to say. I could need to say. You know how phones work, yeah, junk mail, yeah, uh, prank anyway, calls. Anyway, what, what are you drinking? I, you can call me Whiskers. Wait, now, now that we've got the preamble out of the way, <laughs> where, where do you want to start? Because it's it's been a week, let me tell you. I feel like I, let me start with, it'll, be, it'll just be potentially dated, because we are recording this on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark, we'll know, everybody will know by the time this comes out. We one game away from everybody that ever went to UConn saying she should have ran from the grind or her just being the greatest. And I, I mean, I'm rooting for South Carolina. That's what I think will win. But is, is Kayla, we'll just say final four, is getting to Iowa with no other, respectfully, I don't know how many future pros, I should say, are on that current Iowa team other than Kaylin Clark. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> But they was getting on Brianna Stewart, who played four years and won four championships, and I believe mm-hmm. four most outstanding players. She was like, yeah, she got to get a ring to be the GOAT. They were like, you played with 12 other WNBA <laughs> players. You played with the greatest coach of all time. <laughs> Maybe you're not wrong, but can't, yeah, can you say that? So I'm just to ready fair, for the, the run from the grind ball. She did say one. She wasn't like she's going to win four. She's going right. to match, match me. me. She, was, yeah. she was like, if she wins one, but... Because I saw a friend of the program, Miles Brown, talking about something very similar, being like, it, it must be nice playing with uh, a team full of future pros. And then you, you have to uh, acknowledge that part. Have to. Um, it makes me think, like, when, when I hear about the Magic Bird finals hmm. of Indiana State versus Michigan State, I always hear, like, yeah, Indiana State was just overmatched by Michigan State. They should have been overmatched the whole fucking tournament. How did they get there? I've never heard the path. At the only, It just spawns. Championship game. Like, there was BCS, and they were selected to play in that game. No, I know there was a tournament, and I know Bird had yeah. to walk through a bunch of teams that were way better than Indiana State. And now we've just lived it with Caitlin Clark. 
That should be enough. <laughs> she got them to the championship. She beat UConn. That used to mean something in my day, Withers. They got them to the championship twice, back to back years. Right, right. And again, like the team is like very well designed to play around her. But it's like, man, oh man, if you get what is more impressive, like doing almost, I don't want to say what you're supposed to do because Brown and Stewart that was incredible. Like that four and four sure. is remarkable. I don't even know. They probably lost four games her entire if four. That. Yeah, combined so there's that but it's still like man, you were stacked right this Iowa team not stacked Kalen Clark doing things that we just haven't seen at this level with that range I think the pass it might be the one like I every time I watch I'm like I still think that's her best skill. I know that's a hot take Nick. The shooting the ball <laughs> in the bucket part is great <laughs> but again imagine if she was setting up even three other WNBA like future pros sure or six or twelve, so I would trade all my picks to get her. I say all that to say, unless she stinks in this game, right? Maybe I should cut a take just in case. She's the worst. <laughs> she should stay another year. She should get her degree. <laughs> Baitland Clark, fishing for them fouls. I did see uh, Brett Coleman posted. Yeah, I wanted to see when the Fever were coming to town. He lives out in L.A. When the fever were coming down, these ticket prices are already 10x what they are. Any other, anyone else coming to town for the WNBA this year. So I, I feel like people are going to keep watching her. Um, uh, did you see what the Aces did? No. The Las Vegas Aces, defending WNBA champions, when the fever go there, they're, they're moving their games already from the 12,000 seat venue to the 20,000. They were like, no, 12,000. Where we normally play, defending champions now, it's not enough. We know Caitlin Clark bringing that much more action. That's different for this era, like that we get to see in this era. The Oakland days were like, I hear there's a twelve thousand seat stadium opening up. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to the, the A's. The, we don't know where they. Just the A's. Yeah, yeah. The A's. They could be anybody. Hey. But yeah, shout out uh, South Carolina and UConn for winning the championships. Like like Withers said, it's Sunday, one p.m. None of these games have been played, and that take could Iowa, be South as Carolina, Iowa. No, no, no. I was, I was shouting out both the men's and women's champions. Oh, my bad, my bad. I, even <laughs> I, I don't even consider that a sport. Uh, that, uh, the, oaf, the Oaf Bowl? You think I'm going to watch the Oaf Bowl? 7-2 <laughs> on 7-4. Uh, click. <laughs> I saw someone say that was the best big man matchup since, like, Hakeem Ewing uh, in, like, 85, whenever the fuck that was. And respectfully, like, it, it's been, what, a decade? And I know people are going to laugh, but uh, Okafor Kaminsky was more hyped up than this. You know what I mean? I think like, those were those, like, the last two players of the year. They had to have been. I don't know if Okafor Maybe, won. I, I was going to say, yeah, Okafor was definitely freshman of the year. But I think, yeah, Kaminsky got his senior year. So Yes, yeah, yeah Kaminsky for, was the most outstanding yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, that was a big fucking deal. And I kind of see a... Not a lot of parallels between that game and this game, but more parallels between that Wisconsin team and this Purdue team. I don't like Wisconsin and Purdue. It it takes a lot for them to get to here. Like you know, what I mean, the national mm-hmm. championship. A Wisconsin, I don't think has been particularly close since maybe an Elite Eight. Wisconsin's always good. I would say the same about Purdue. I'd say they're pretty similar programs basketball wise. Uh, I don't know that Purdue will get another shot like this. They'll be around. You know what I mean? I don't think they're going mm-hmm. away. They'll be competitive consistently. These opportunities, UConn may never lose again. Uh, they <laughs> about to go like, back seriously. to back. Yeah, they Hurley doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. Like, I think it's it's his sport at the moment. I, every quote that come out, I'm like, man, oh, man, that, that's a coach. Because he talked, like, before last year, I think they lost first round before they won the championship. He was like, I had to change how I, like, what I was doing was not working. I said, man, self-awareness on a coach. It, <laughs> must be nice. Isn't that nice? He was like, the NIL, he's like, it changed how I coach. He's like, we, I want them to, sell. like, you, you're privileged to have all this stuff. I'm going to ride your ass. Because there's a lot of people out there giving you this stuff. You got to show you earn it. All right. And they are beating everybody by double digits. <laughs> so I, I feel like both sides are fulfilling their end of the bargain. But this, uh, this this giant off. I, I was told big men are not bad. Yeah, I don't know. I'm <clears throat> not super in. Like, I'm not intrigued to watch that in the same way I'm intrigued to watch 
Uh, if Caitlin Clark can beat South Carolina, I don't think she can. And again, this will be crazy dated by the time it comes out. Um, she scored 85. South Carolina didn't <laughs> score a point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, Dawn Staley, she's, she, she was like, I agree with Brianna Stewart. She's got to win one. And I hope she doesn't. Uh, no, yeah. all, all due respect, uh, but she's playing me, so fuck her. Do you see Edie uh, playing baseball? Do you see that footage of him throwing meatballs? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that helps or hurts my case. Like, I, normally I like a guy that plays multiple sports, just in general. Oh man, if you're throwing seventy-one down the I, center I, to play, I, I, yeah, I don't know if that helps or hurts me, Daddy. It was it, shut up and dribble. Yeah. <laughs> As a bigger fella who also wasn't like a <laughs> velocity merchant, people really fucking hate your guts when you're that big, and it's like, why aren't you throwing ninety-five? Like we. We read Kareem's book. We talked to Kareem. When he was in, like, eighth grade, he was throwing, like, 91. Like, that makes more sense. Edie being up there, just easy, like, Sunday morning right down the pipe. Like, yeah, that's... What are you doing, bud? Push up. Use your legs, son. Oh, man. I'm going perfect, perfect on that on the show, buddy. (laughs) That's going 489 over the right field wall. I also saw, which I I still don't understand, and I refuse to look into these things because at the end of the day, I don't care. Edie can't make NIL money because he's Canadian. I find that to be very funny. <laughs> Dude, it sucks. Uh, yeah, I did put in the ch- uh, Horford and Noah versus Odin. That's probably the most reason, just in terms of like okay. super big man matchup. Um, I mean, that but, was for sure not more reason than Kaminsky, but I'm glad the Florida flan- fan got us to talk about yeah. Florida going back to Did back. somebody say Billy Donovan? Um, <laughs> But speaking of Al Horford, he remains hot on the field. Oh, my God. Now, no, uh, <laughs> no, what was I going to say? I forgot. Uh, uh, Edie, Edie can't make NIL money. Oh, it's Oscar had it for two years because Oscar's from Africa. Like anybody, yeah, if you're born overseas, there's struggles. You can only, like they had a Puerto Rican tournament before. Oscar like got there a week ahead to record everything he could to make money for NIL. And it's like, that wouldn't figure, that was two years ago. Edie's right. still going through this. I know the NCAA doesn't move quickly on anything. Or care but, about yeah, or care. That's money. what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I get it when you get it. But just like Edie was just like, I've missed out on a bunch of bread, man. Like, it is what it is. But for the people after me, it just feels like there has to, or there should be something. And I'm sure in 2028, perhaps, they will probably pass this uh, something to where if you weren't born in this country, you could still profit in Iowa. Yeah, I don't necessarily understand. Like, uh, you, you make their visa a work visa. I'm sure that's like the technicality. You know what I mean? Like they, mm. they're not they're not here full time. They're not citizens or whatever the fuck. But I don't know. It seems like an easy fix. I say that while we've got nothing on that front figured out. But <laughs> it seems like <laughs> it's just a thing where I at least appreciate the consistency. Like it took. Uh, was it Tez um, Walker from Walker, UNC? Yeah. yeah. Took him a few games. Big Z from Kentucky. They halfway through the season, they're like, oh, yeah, you're actually clear. So just the consistency of we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah. And speaking of pitcher, what do, pitchers did used to pitch in our day. Mick, what happened? Yeah, it's uh, everyone. If you throw a ball forward right now, you're hurt. It just is what it is. That's 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 modern ball. Um, I don't know. It really sucks. And it, it, baseball fans can't seem to agree on why this is happening. Luckily, I know. I'm, hmm. That's just what I do. Uh, why am I blanking on his name immediately? Uh, Glass now. Tyler Glass now. I was going to say Trevor Gossman, which isn't a person. Tyler Glass now. <laughs> you just uh, got TG on the break. Todd Gurley. <laughs> <laughs> Glass now. Uh, like the seventh most important Dodgers move of the offseason trading uh, for him from Tampa. Really good pitcher, really good stuff. He got hurt pretty much immediately after the whole spider tax shit in MLB. Okay. Um, and Is he two talk- seasons ago now? It has to be, yeah, because he came back at the end of last year. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So, 21. Um, okay. So, he got hurt. And when he got hurt, he gave like, and I, I retweeted it the other day, he gave like a very open press conference about like, I never use spider tack. I use sunscreen and rosin because that was the only way I could grip the ball. 
and now I can't use that. So what it is, I'm shocked I don't have a baseball near me. Um, most pitchers keep the ball like towards the front of their hand, and Glass now has like 14 inch hands. So like even he's like six eight, right? He's like he's massive. Uh, Matt, he yeah. should have hooped. Um, <laughs> and what a, I think a lot of people don't realize is Major League Baseballs are not. They don't just like go into Dick's Sporting Goods and grab them off the shelf. There's this process called mudding that happens every off season where they get a huge shipment of balls, I believe from Rawlings. They get a huge shipment of balls and they just pack them with mud. Fucking, that's why they're like <laughs> brown. <laughs> that's why they're not white. Um, so they mud the fuck Dr. out. Dr. Umar on the case. I don't like that. It's, I beg your I pardon. Like, I, I, beg. I don't prefer that. But it's like, they're slippery as shit. Like, they, you, they're yeah. tough to grip. And so when they got rid of the sticky stuff, like when all that shit broke, he was saying, yeah, I used to put it on my fingertips because that's where I could control it. And that's where you're supposed to throw it anyways. Mm. But I can't, I physically can't, like, I, I wouldn't have any idea where the ball was going. So I had to grip it way back into my hand, which means now I'm squeezing the ball when before it was just kind of resting in my fingers. So he said after his first start, he pitched well doing that. The next morning, his arm was sore in a way mm. that had never been sore before. And he's like, I know this sounds like I'm making excuses, but this is just the truth of the matter. I, these are not, and Alex Cora was just talking about it yesterday. He's like, the natural throwing motion is underhand. Though everything about pitching overhand oh, is unbelievably unnatural. That's why softball pitchers can go like 140 pitches and they're right. fine because there's no torque, there's no strain, it's all natural. And now not only have you taken away pitchers being able to grip the ball, you now have pitching coaches not teaching them how to fundamentally pitch. You're teaching them how to achieve maximum velocity. Right, how to throw, right? Three, yeah, how to throw as hard yeah. as possible, generate as much spin as possible. Spin rate, yeah. Which goes against, like, the 12 years of, of training these pitchers have had. Like, I know it's not a huge difference, but in order to reach back and get the extra spin, those extra miles per hour, you're not throwing the same. So, yeah, it's putting a lot of different stress on all these guys' elbows. Uh, I know Jeff Passan wrote a book. It was either a book or a really long article. Don't remember. I, I think it was a book because I, I didn't, do think it was a book. I saw that, yeah. And they said the the findings. This is the excerpt I saw. The findings were that sliders, sweepers, breaking stuff, which we we were told when we were all in little league, you can't throw curveballs; it'll fuck up your arm. I know I was told that so like sure. in high school, like thirteen yeah. or sixteen or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they said the findings were there was no real truth to that. There was no extra torque. First baseball coach you ever had is like, I fucking told you. <laughs> I told you. But reaching to get extra spin on fastballs was putting a tremendous amount of strain. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like everyone's going for speed. I, On one half of me, I do get it. Obviously, if you can get everyone throwing 100 miles per hour, that's better for your pitching staff. However, I see plenty of players every day strike out on 91. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's still fucking hard to hit. I get hitters have become better. They've got more data. They know what they're looking for. You're still talking about a small percentage of the league that can not do anything about that. You know what I mean? There's only so many Juan Sotos. There's only so many Rafael Devers. Fucking, I love Bobby Dahlbeck. You could throw him 91 down the dick. He's probably not going to hit it. Like, most players are like that. You know? Like, I don't... <laughs> I get this, but at what point there's a big conversation that's brewing? Should pitchers just get treated like running backs, which I know is music to yes. your ears? Yes. But that, like, we just saw Montgomery and Snell, like, objectively good pitchers not be able to get deals until, like, they still haven't pitched this season because of how late in the process they signed. Are their arms that, cooked? Like, are they, is that the. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh. Uh -oh. They're both. That's the thing. Snell, he's not like a. A speed merchant, a velocity merchant. He's like a nibbler. He's gonna paint. He's gonna try and uh, a pitcher's get, pitcher. Yeah, he's like if, if Maddox was a little worse. That's that's Blake Snell. Uh, literally everybody ever. Sure. But, yeah. But it's like Maddox knew how to pitch. He wasn't just out there throwing. And I don't expect everybody to have that insane of command as Greg Maddox. But I don't know. I grew up like Paul Skeens was the first pick in the draft last uh, year. 
uh, from LSU. He's with the Pirates. He's like six seven, six eight, like a like a Roger Clemens, like a true Roger Clemens burly boy. He could throw a hundred because he's that size. You know what I mean? I don't think. Right. I'm sure he's had different types of, of coaching to help get him up to that speed, but it doesn't seem unnatural coming from him. Pedro throwing like 98, 99 was absurd because of how small he was, but he just had unbelievable mechanics and a huge hand, which generated more spin. Like that was, I don't want to say birth defect because that makes it sound like a, a negative, but that was <laughs> birth blessing. Yeah, yeah it was, that was his life. <laughs> his superpower, like him being able to throw a changeup because it looked like a fucking golf ball in his hands, was why he was so good. This was my fear too, when they broke out the pitch clock, and some players have immediately mm. pointed to the pitch clock, and now you've got everyone else being like it has nothing to do with the pitch clock. Of course, the pitch clock plays something here. You're now asking pitchers to sprint rather than jog. Of course, that's going to be more taxing on their arm. It has to be. Alec Manoa is out of baseball because of the pitch clock. Like It has clearly had an impact on certain people's ability to throw. If you're asking guys to reload and throw 100 without even getting a chance to breathe, yeah, that's going to tax them. Now, is that 50% of the problem? No, it's probably close to 5% of the problem. To say it has no impact is insane to me. Yeah, I feel like... Even if you're saying it's not, I feel like the case would be we don't have enough data. Like two years is sure. not enough data. But it does seem like, yeah, how could it not play at least some kind of role in that? I did. I saw, uh, I think it was Chris Towers that posted about Skeens. Like the five, I think five fastest pitches thrown in AAA this year have been Skeens. And he's like, to what you were saying, why is he still in AAA? If a pitching – Prospect is like a running back. I, I'll never forget Keith lost maybe 10 years ago was when I heard him say it. He's like, there's no such thing as a pitching prospect True. in terms of there's, there's only so many miles pitches on that arm. If they're like gassing like that, you probably should like let them figure it out on the fly rather than potentially like you don't want to give a guy 400 carries in college unless he Derrick Henry. And sure. He's not a human being. <laughs> sure. But for the most part, yeah, if you got a guy throwing gas like that, he should probably be in the majors because, like we're seeing now, there's feels like there's only so many pitches on an arm. Usually, I mean, also unless you're Nolan Ryan, and the way right. things are going, it's just speeding that up. I feel like also the guys playing, the pitchers now probably been playing year round baseball, correct? Because they was ten years old. So you doing all that, throwing more, and I feel like I like bullpens are on the rise. So I thought that would kind of. Thick, or I guess alleviate some of it, but I think it's the uh, like because you know you have a hard, a good bullpen behind you. It's like, yeah, just go, go as hard as you can, man. Yeah. Throw 100 as many times as you can in five innings because it's not a, it's not a bad thing to go out after five innings if you just gassed it. We got yeah, enough it, to to fix it. But now it's like, and I saw it with the Red Sox last night, they're, they're overtaxing their bullpen nine games into the season because you can only carry right. so many arms. Like that's just the right. so if, I don't know if they want to which I know they won't do, but add four or five slots to the roster that can only be relievers. I know they're not going to do this, but at a certain point, you have to look at this like, well, how do we fix this? Like, when I know this used to be the case. I don't know if this is still the case. When the Red Sox first started bringing in Japanese pitchers, it, they were like, why do they warm up so differently? They warm up with resistance bands. They don't just throw yeah, don't throw a time. ball at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or to, yeah. <laughs> they just do, and I'm sure that's evolved. So, I mean, we're talking about 2008, you know what I mean? This was a, right. a while, or 2007. Now they don't even use the bands. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all air. <laughs> but, a couple of, yeah, just a couple of these, he's ready to fire. But yeah, I don't, Cora was saying this too. He was like, there's no off season anymore. The guys get off and they just immediately go to Arizona or they go to the DR or they go to Venezuela. They play year round. When is your arm supposed to recover? I'm not saying, like, don't do anything, but it feels like doing, like, just weight training or, or stuff like that in the offseason. Just don't – or play long toss even. But you can't be, like, throwing 97, 365 days a year. Like, that isn't going to end well. I was just reading different, like, sports biographies, and the main thing was, like, just during the offseason. It's like, man, training during the offseason didn't become a thing until – very recently. Super recently. Guys would do nothing for a while. Then they would start like swimming, tennis, boxing, jogging. 
and then pick up a bat or a basketball or a football or whatever and start getting the training drills. And so we realized, okay, what if they just trained all the time? They'd be so much better. And it's like you are, but like you burned out. You are really only learning to do those motions. And I feel like right. I don't. A lot of them are unnatural motions. Like you're not learning. I guess you're not using some of the athleticism required in other sports, like in a basketball, a football, a track, uh, whatever. You're just doing only that motion, eleven months out of the year, to be conservative, <laughs> and you just do it from the time you're ten. So it's like, yeah, no, you get to twenty-two, you you might be spit. You don't know it yet, right? But. You're thinking like, yeah, six years service time, then he'll sign and all that. And it's like, man, he might get through them six years of service time. That's with no in, like no major injuries, which you're seeing now. Spencer Strider got some decent news, so I or for now at least. But right. Yeah, Strider. It's April. So <laughs> Yeah, the seventh for a week into April. Strider <laughs> got imaging done. Um I saw Garrett, Bieber's out. Garrett Cole, yeah, Bieber's out which I believe it's a contract year for him. So terrible timing for him mm -hmm. personally. He was about to get a bag from somebody, maybe. Um, <laughs> Yuri April Perez, first, yeah. speaking of the Marlins, got they fast-tracked. Yeah. He's he's getting surgery for the year. Like, Giolito got hurt before the season. I'm sure there are a couple other. The, the list I saw was like nine names long. So it's, it's good times. Good times had by all. But, I mean, this is where... I, I look to my muse, someone who I always look to in times like this, Ozzy Guillen, who on the White Sox post game, um, was just like, listen, I used to play with some real fatzos. They played 162 every. every <laughs> That's the fact. John said, Crook was playing 170 a year. <laughs> he said specifically, "You can't pull fat," which is such a great quote <laughs> because it. It implies if you're so fat, you actually have no muscle. It's just all only fat. Like you have no hamstring. You just have ham. Like it's just. I can't tear it if I ain't got it. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Guillen. <too. laughs> what, what exactly did he say? Because it's such an unbelievable. You can't pull fat. Unbelievable quote. That it was just like, I I fear he's spitting. I fear Ozzy. I remember guys having 12 Budweiser's, three hamburgers. They played all oh, year yeah. long. That's that's real athleticism. So I, I, I have to ask, are athletes too athletic now? I, the immediate counter that came to my mind is Zion. When he's fat, he's useless. He cannot play at all. But... He's also too athletic and fat. Like, he's got to pick one or the other. He either needs to be all fat or all athlete. He can't be doing this this one foot in, one foot out. That's the Luca business. Like, Jokic had that, that goblin mask talking to him. For, he, he put it away. He, he shattered it. I think Luca mostly put it away, but sometimes, it's like, don't you don't you want to drink six beers after a triple-double, Luca? Huh? Huh? Who? Me? <laughs> Some fluzzleberry hookah uh, the night before we fly into to New York. Me? Okay. Okay. No, nah, I think Guillen might be right, man. Like, what if, what if it was a better, t like, again, basketball play, like, th there has to be a line. Like, maybe you shouldn't smoke a cigarette right before you go out to play in the NBA Finals. But after, after, right. Right. Yeah, the game's two days away. You know what I'm saying? You want to drink a little beer at halftime? Maybe it keeps you loose. I know. I've asked 89 about his off-season routine. I think he took either a full month or two months off from whenever the season ended of everything. And then yeah. he would start, like he would build back up. You know what I mean? He would he would start basically from scratch. And obviously a pro athlete's zero is not our zero. But he would he would basically restart. He's like, yeah, that first week I was puking every day, you know. And it'd be like high school, late August, going to football training when the running coaches... heels and shit. <laughs> yeah, and so he was, tires, yeah. he was like, I never used a jugs machine ever, ever. I thought it that's kind of that's crazy. That's finding I... out like Herschel Walker didn't lift a weight until like they, <laughs> they physically made him the UGA. <laughs> but he was like, I thought it was. Like that's not how a hard quarterbacks throw. Like it, so he thought it like it's never coming direct. Yeah, 
and it's he thought it just fucked with your hands so he was like i never did that i really wouldn't like he was like i know how to catch like so i would just show i wouldn't catch a football until i got to training camp he was like i i know that part of my job all the rest would be like training just physical weights all that and it's like it may i understand he at this point he played like 20 years ago like when he was coming up which right. 20 years ago so i get things have changed and, and athletes have adapted but i do think there's a lot too, even when we're talking about throwing, if all you're ever doing is throwing, you're letting the muscles around that muscle atrophy. That has to be bad. You know what I mean? If you're doing yeah. other motions, if you're doing other exercises so that everything's strong rather than just one specific yes. area, yeah. that seems to be a better idea to me, Dr. Mick. Um, but I've gotten my certification stripped of me for many, many times now. I right, but you always bounce, man. You can't stop. Of course. Stepping. Of course. I mean, listen, they ain't want a quarterback. They still don't want a quarterback slick to have muscles. It's like the perfect build is John Elway. That was, that was Brady. Who was an athlete. I'm not saying he wasn't an sure, athlete, but yeah. I'm saying like the build. Yeah, Peyton Manning. No muscle, like mass, no muscle tone whatsoever. Just a, a big one. Just a big old hoss. I mean, this is going back even farther. Red Auerbach despised weight training. Despised it. He only Same. wanted body weight like it's, he's like push-ups pull-ups sit-ups all that calisthenics is what i want uh, yeah rubbing that big thing on your back uh, like babe roof <laughs> yeah the rubber band yeah the jiggler uh <laughs> need to hook frittato up to that anywho uh <laughs> promiscuous girl <laughs> what a preposterous song that was inescapable and what was that oh six i want to say <laughs> Damn it, Timberland! You've done it again. <laughs> Who was the last verse on that? Oh, let's see. It's somewhat. Well, surely, if I just type "promiscuous girl," I'll get. Oh God! What I'm looking for. Oh boy! It's first number one by a Canadian female artist since "I'm Your Angel" by Celine Dion and R. Kelly. Yikes! What? You know what verse? This song about, about Steve Nash. What? <laughs> the reference to basketball player Steve Nash in the lyrics led to speculation he and Furtado were romantically involved. But both denied any link with Nash commenting, I'm flattered that she put me in her song, but I'm completely in love with my wife and two little baby girls. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> she said she just put him in there because they're both Canadian. <laughs> okay. All right. He's like, hey, you could have put me in I'm like a bird. You, I'm a, I got a wife and kids. Don't put me in promiscuous girl. Don't shout me out in that one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think they did a couple of songs during this era. I might be thinking of one of their other, uh, the other Timberland Furtado bangers. <laughs> Timber Tato. There, was, there was another, it was just such a preposterous verse. Uh, and that, man, it might have been Magoo, R.I.P. That was a Magoo. Hop, no, uh, I was going to say, he used to hop on there with Sebastian, Timberland's little brother, because Timberland's little Could've brother Sebastian. That baby girl, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to ruin the house. I got a room in the house. It's a baby girl. Mm -hmm. I thought that was promiscuous. Again, there was a whole, it could be Flo Rida. Pitbull <laughs> had a couple songs that go like that, like exactly <laughs> how you was just, so. It could be anybody. They had the, the mid-aughts uh, in an absolute chokehold. It's <laughs> gasping for air. Ringtone rap, man, bring it back. The pass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> um, now, ringtone rap commercials, those used to go crazy. The actual rapping that was happening, little to be des desired. I, I don't know if it's that much better or worse than the rap, some of the rapping we get currently. Sure, I don't necessarily disagree. Have we talked about before another? Oh, yeah. I don't like. I don't think Ray Allen lifted. Well, like I think he was all body weight because he said he didn't want to fuck his shot up. Which yeah, makes sense. That's why I didn't lift too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was my, my shot, my swing. Yeah. I'm sure I was, heavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All time. All time. <laughs> Have you come to weightlifting, Chuck? Nah. <laughs> Heavens, no. Mm -mm. Y'all just see uh, Alan peel out behind. I, I don't think he's coming to the weightlifting. <laughs> you talk about someone who like, lived inside the Green Goblin mask. He's like, Fridays, don't mind if I do. <laughs> I'm saying he he was the the Goblin mask. Used to uh, look at Iverson. You say mask. Let's go to TGI Friday. Alan, I'm tired. <laughs> it's two for Tuesdays. <laughs> 
<laughs> just one drink. Cool, just yeah. one drink, Alan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one Long Island iced tea. Twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> but the contra is like you either lifted no weights or you lifted like all the weights. Like just you were just Charles Oakley. It's like what are you talking? Like I've been lifting weights since I was not. Like that's right. just what I. That's just what I do. Right. I can't imagine not weight training. There's got to be some sort of answer. Uh, I don't know that anyone's actually looking for it in good faith. What I also do find interesting, though, a lot of pitchers have come out anti-pitch clock, and I I hear the quotes and I read them. They never get made into a larger story. I'm not going to uh, accuse the MLB of intentionally burying that, but I don't have a better answer for what's happening because they... <laughs> Tony Clark, the Players Association, and many pitchers are like, yeah, man, I, this isn't good for us. And everyone's just like, anyway, we're actually going to lower it. Uh, it's going to be faster next year. This is turf for the NFL. They're like, it's actually just fine. <laughs> Rosenthal was going to run the story, man. It, they put some cut-up bow ties in this bed. I heard about it, man. It was it was nasty. He woke up next to him like a godfather one. On uh, on Section 10, I think the first episode back, uh, I got into an argument with someone that they said pitching is the best it's ever been. And I comp- I disagreed. I was like, I think the, the, the thought process behind getting pitchers to the absolute max is for sure better than it's ever been. Mm. But I don't know that pitching is better. Like, there's no art to it at the moment because everyone's trying to do kind of the same thing. You're playing percentages. Like, I think they're smarter about it. I don't think they're executing it well at all based on the injuries we're talking about. Right. But if I were to name like the ninth best pitcher of like 1999, and I don't think this is me being an old back in my day kind of guy, like pay, there's no Pedro right now. Obviously I think very highly of him. He may be the best pitcher of all time. I could say the same about Clemens. I don't know if there's a Clemens right now. Skeens may well be, but he's still in triple a, um, the Maddox, the, I don't know that we'll ever see anyone even kind of like Maddox again. Yeah. yeah, Randy Johnson, one of these guys is the fourth best pitcher we've named so far, and they'd all be the best pitcher in baseball comfortably right now. I guess the case would be, like, are the hitters better than ever by the same thing? Like, they've been I thought about trained that too. to I maximize. <laughs> yeah, Like, what, Bonds, it's... Gwynn, uh, A-Rod, Griffey. Like, I don't. There are obviously really good hitters and pitchers right now. I'm very high mm-hmm. on the product. That's why I talk about it as much as I do. I'm very high on baseball. But much like how pitchers are only trying to do one thing, hitters, until they change the shift rule, which is still very new, we're all trying to do a three true outcome. Strike out, hit a home run, or walk. That was it. There's no way those pitchers or those hitters are as smart as like a George Brett, you know what I mean? A guy who could just get on base every single time. Now, you could argue they're more impactful. I don't necessarily disagree if you're hitting 45 home runs a year. Pretty impactful. Right. But, much like I said earlier, not everyone was doing that. It made for a bad product. That's, I mean, just as you say that, it just sounds like basketball. Like mm-hmm. Everybody realized that three-point was the same thing. So it's yeah. like, I'm sure he's much more efficient, but you're telling me Mikhail Bridges' 24 was the same as like Clyde Drexler's? Right. Like, I just, one of them, it's like, yeah, no, shoot the three. So I'm sure his true shooting and E field goal and all that is better. It's like, but you can't tell me there's a better, like, a more complete offensive game there. I feel like, I, like, in baseball, in most sports, I feel like we're doing better at probably maximizing sure the talent that we get just in t- what we know about. the Even if we completely ignore most of it, we know so much about the body and then just have them throw 90 times. <laughs> <laughs> for two hours straight every day or every five days right. for six months. So I feel like there's maximization, but along with that, you are going to get the burnout. And I think it's just like, we're just, we're fine with the burnout because the high end is worth it. You might have Tommy John three times by the time you're 24, but you might get paid. Like you might get it back. You might get paid. The stakes are higher, but I, yeah, I don't know if it makes for a better, sport on the whole yeah watch a better watching experience yeah and i don't know that you are maximizing a player truly if they're spending every other year not playing at all you know what i mean if right. what is your true max is it going a hundred percent fifty percent of the time or is it going eighty percent a hundred percent of the time me going fifty percent fifty percent of the time <laughs> that's all i got left ah it's the whole time people think LeBron on PEDs, it's actually just wine. Once he became an alcoholic, that's when he started playing well into his, well into his 40s. When I hear 
LeBron, and especially DK Metcalf, that asshole. Anytime I hear them speak about their goddamn diets, I'm like, I do the same thing. What? What? Why are these such different pictures, Your Honor? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Uh, Billie Eilish or somebody's like, I, no, I don't do any of that. I don't. Oh, Sydney Sweeney. I just wash. Yeah, I, I just wash my face and go to bed. Like I don't know what to tell you. And they're like, yeah, I bet you do. So that was. I bet you do. That was a fake. You're 21. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, Sydney Sweeney said she sleeps like 30 minutes a day and doesn't drink coffee. She did just. Yeah, that, she said that for sure. Uh, yeah. But there, before that, there had been like a fake Instagram health and fitness influencer who was like, I represent Sydney Sweeney. She doesn't eat anything that has like cast a shadow. And then she was like, all I eat is carbs. <laughs> like literally all I eat is like, she, she's from like the, the homeland, you know what I mean? Like she for sure only eats carbs. Uh, which I respect. Shout out to it. But yeah, she herself was like, yeah, don't care for coffee. Uh, I'm up 23 hours a day. I was like, yeah, I remember when I was 22. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, just the things that you get to do. Yeah, it was sick. Uh, it ends abruptly. Uh, <laughs> those tires come screeching. Falls. For some, it don't. Like everybody think it don't till it don't. Because again, Iverson was one of those guys like, yeah, hey, I don't sleep. And it. I feel like once it caught up, it caught up. Right. But then also LeBron was like, no, the wine fuel, like the, that's what, <laughs> I'm depleted. But the Merlot brings it back. The blend <laughs> brings it back. Yeah. LeBron's on a wine and like gummy bear diet. And he still uh, uses Pandora with ads uh, to listen to music. <laughs> Just doodling. I don't know why Bart's head's so big. Listen, LeBron's hilarious, man. I, that's what I'm thankful for. Did they, they, <laughs> I do like, like, every time there's a great player, it's like, you know, hey, enjoy him, because when he's gone, you're going to miss him. I don't worry about that with LeBron, because he's going to find a way to put himself in our life forever. Ever. I'm fine with it, because LeBron's hilarious. But this is why, in particular, I think Dan Gilbert has a chance to do, like, the funniest thing ever. Bronny James (laughs) is entering his name in the draft and the transfer portal. Correct. Who won? To be fair. <laughs> Listen, you are a wildcat, Bronny James. I want to say, first, I'm not out on Bronny James becoming a good player. Like, anything I've ever seen, read, watched about the people who have watched him have never been like, this is the profile of a one-and-done right. guy. So this, like, the first-year struggle, especially after last summer that he had, doesn't surprise me in the slightest. So I, I would hope he gets some more grace there. Having said that, what if Dan Gilbert was just like, we got our ring. I still don't really fuck with you, LeBron James. We're drafting your son in the first round, and we're going to give him 35 minutes a game. We're going to – like, the whole world will watch him sink or swim. <laughs> that – and Dan Gilbert, everybody's just like, pull him out. He's not – come on, man. He should be a sophomore. He should be a Duquesne or something. Let, let him develop. And Dan Gilbert's like, no, you will run the ISO for James. <laughs> Pass the ball, Donovan, Darius, Evan, Jerry, anybody, <laughs> Isaac. They just run Bryant 40 minutes a game, man. <laughs> He's just getting getting his boot smoked. And Dan Gilbert's just sitting there like. I mean, it would be objectively be funny. I don't know what Bron. It'd be hilarious. Because <laughs> Bron, he's still getting paid. He'd still get first. So everybody, he'd do some numbers. Maybe he does develop. But if Dan Gilbert was also like, you want to stop this, you'll come sign back here again. LeBron's like, okay, man, I can't. His PER so low, I can't. <laughs> I'll do it. Mid level exception, me, daddy. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. I don't think there's a world where Bron is in the NBA and LeBron isn't on that team. It, he got a player option. At what point does it make sense in this draft, which we keep hearing, Stinks. is the is the worst? It gets worse by the day. At what point does it make sense? If you're like, we probably get at least one year of LeBron James. How many teams, that's the reason they wouldn't draft Bronny? Because they don't want the one-year LeBron? <laughs> right. Because when you, like get, they don't want, mm. when you get LeBron, I don't care how old he is, that is now LeBron's team. Mm-hmm. So if you're like the Nuggets, I think you're, you pass. Oh, yeah. they Listen, they don't need no – they don't need draft picks. <laughs> They're doing too well. Like, they need to be stripped of draft pick for success. <laughs> They're drafting, scouting, developing too well. There are also certain teams that's like, we know we shouldn't 
but it's LeBron James. Yeah, I like we, the magic. We, we have to be able to say LeBron James played for us. We have to be able to have sold the LeBron James jersey. At what point? To draft Bronny. Yeah, I'm talking about draft, like, yeah. end of first round. Celtics oh. got that last pick in the first. Uh... Yeah, see, I think the Celtics are another team. I don't think those. And I think LeBron would just retire. I don't think he'd ever play for the Celtics. I don't, I don't know any world where he would come play for the, Like, he hates Boston. If Bronny James is, if his son is, I think that's that's the world. I think Bronny James would be playing uh, uh, Olympicados. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Braun might be too. Yeah, exactly. I don't know that. And the Celtics, like the Broncos, Marcellonis. Yeah, or... I think like the Magic still hold like uh, what is it? Lamps. Well, what was that? Frederick Weiss. They still hold like his Frederick, rights. Uh... You know what I mean? Like some teams hold rights forever, uh, and there is some reason to it. But like, I don't know that the Celtics would like it would just ba- basically ban Bronny James from the NBA <laughs> as the unintended effect. Yeah, exactly. It's like, we want him here. We think he's a great defender. Combo guard, him, him and Jaden Springer can battle it out for backup minutes. Bronny's like, or LeBron's like, Mm-mm. New Zealand yeah. breakers is where he's going. <laughs> yeah, we will be NBLers. I'm just looking at, I just, the 38th pick, the New York Knicks have a 38th pick. I think the Knicks would absolutely, like, man, it might just be to get one year of Bron and MSG sell that jersey. The 76ers have the 41st pick. Oh, I think no, Daryl Morey would 100% do that. Are they they forfeited f- the 44th pick for reasons I forget. Uh, the Pacers have, like, I'm seeing multiple second-round picks. The Lakers would, I feel like, of course. I feel like Spurs is the one. Popovich, Wimby, and they get Bronny. It's like, come we have wine in Austin too, old man. Yeah, that's, that's Pistons, totally what you got to lose? I was going to say, I'm looking at, like, should the Raptors just take him sixth? <laughs> just like, just like we we see him as a important part of our team. Right now, the Hornets have the third pick. We know they're going to fuck that up. Like, we know that. Why not? I don't. Brandon Miller's cold, man. Sure, I don't disagree. One for 50 doesn't mean, like, are they on a hot streak? Is that what you're trying to say? (laughs) I think things are looking up, yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, like, the Pistons are going to take, right now they're projected the first overall pick, another center. Like, that. of all the things they need, I don't know that that's it. He's not going to play anyway. Mike Williams is going to be playing Rashawn Holmes or whoever they sign. Right, so you might as well just draft Bronny one. That would be the funniest thing ever. I'm sorry. I would love to, because... The thing is, what's so funny, they show the stats. I was like, now, listen, you show some of the stats of these guys coming overseas. They're not going to look so – I thought we was all scouting by the stats, right? We scout the traits. <laughs> Unless the stats are funny. That's how it goes. <laughs> we scout the traits, not the uniform, not the name on the back, the traits. Unless the stats or the name on the back is very funny. The first player who I realized that you can't – especially overseas stats was Rubio. Stay t- all I I heard about Rubio for a year. They're like, nah, this guy's cold. These next should go one overall. And then they showed his three, three, and four. I was like, what? What are we talking about? 17. I was like, he, he played 11 minutes? They were like, you don't understand. They're really trying to win. I was like, what? He shouldn't have been playing at all like with these terrible numbers. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the 20th pick the Knicks have. The Pelicans have the 18th and the 19th pick. There's no excuse for the Pelicans to take two real prospects here. Take one, take another UConn guy, uh, which has worked out well for them thus far, and then take Bronny James, and then you get LeBron there. It seemed, yeah, again, Knicks got the two pick. I feel like the Knicks absolutely would. It's oh, going to yeah. be a Utah Jazz. Danny Ainge going to be like, huh? Ainge huh? for sure. He's, he was the first name I thought of. Um, he does love a defensive first combo guard, too, so it fits – it fits his type. I'm just saying, if we, if again, if this draft really is this bad, and they keep reiterating, it's not me making it up. Every Power two league. weeks, they're like, "Listen, this draft has gotten much, much worse." <laughs> so, at what point, if we know the average, you know, uh, expected win back or whatever for the 22nd pick is not even to become a rotation player, what are the chances that again, what if he just develops? Like, he just didn't have a summer. He was out, like, the whole heart shit. He came into a team that was not that good, so I don't think it's all on him. Like, there's definitely a chance he develops. 
But you would also probably get at least one year of LeBron James. Yeah. Minimum and- mid level exception. LeBron, he might take a little haircut. He's like, man, you guys can just give me 45. We'll, we'll call it even, Steven. <laughs> well, I think that's where it makes a lot of sense for a Kings, a uh, Pelicans, a Knicks, like those teams on the cusp that could use one year of LeBron James, like tremendously. Yeah, I, I'd argue that one year of LeBron James, would, <laughs> if he was on a non 10 c team, could be beneficial. Right. If, like, if, if, if LeBron James could just enter this draft, that you got to think of it like that. You're drafting LeBron James for one year. He's going to play one. Year. That's a, yeah. Where would you? At what point are you like? It's one year of LeBron James or potentially eleven of Zach Resuche. Yeah. It's like I don't. I think he could protect the bucket. I think he'll be able to hit that jumper. And there's an assistant GM that's like, it's LeBron James. I'm losing my shit here. It's literally LeBron James. LeBron should be in the green room in the white suit again. Like, he's like, I listen. Like his old prom dress or so, old wedding dress. It's like, the the Hawks like, Matas Buzelis. LeBron's just like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Yeah, LeBron's still best available. Uh, One, Donovan Klingon. Two, Zach Eady. Three, LeBron James. (laughs) What, what, tell us some of the pros of LeBron's game, Jay Billis. Well, he scored some 40,000 points at this level. Some 10,000 rebounds, 10,000 assists. Four rings. Uh, what could he stand to work on? Time machine? Age, like, yeah. Yeah. One of the older uh, players in this class, for sure. Uh, double. You have, to worry uh, about, <laughs> you have to worry about his upside. Uh, he is 44 years of age. Yeah, has he hit his ceiling? Some scouts are worried about that. <laughs> See, here the thing is now, they can't tell me that Dalton Connect about to go lottery. He like 26. So LeBron's a life 51. We call him NBA ready now. <laughs> What's the the opposite of uh, Bruno uh, Cavacolo's four years away from four years away? LeBron's <laughs> eight years past his prime. However... <laughs> He was four years away from four years being past his prime. Yeah. yeah no, I... LeBron gets drafted but then traded. It's like, oh, the Raptors take. He's got to put on the Grizzlies hat. <laughs> what the fuck? He's like, what the fuck, man? I, didn't... <laughs> I, I think that Bucks might be the funniest. I don't know if funny is the word I personally would use, but I. <laughs> this... Giannis, LeBron, and Doc. This is the, the three dragons, and the silly one at the end is Doc Rivers. <laughs> I think LeBron would swing on Doc Rivers. Oh, we haven't really got into it. Doc's been a quote machine since he got to Milwaukee. That boy's on fire. I must confess. They're much worse than they were with uh, Griffin at the helm. Like, they've... I think their defense has improved, but like their record, I think they're still below 500. They've lost to three teams. Defense got better, offense got worse. Yeah, yeah and like worse. Yeah. these wins and losses at this point of the season don't matter, but to point at Doc and laugh matters very much, uh, yeah. and I'm enjoying that. So, <laughs> or, or Glenn. Correct. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I don't so. want you to. <laughs> His box just pops up. He's like another thing. <laughs> Looking at these, are, I think these are just since he joined the Bucks, which was what less than two months ago. All Star break. He right? wouldn't wish it on anybody. Withers wouldn't wish it on anyone. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Uh, it's been harder than I thought. He said that like two games in. And then the the banger. This is the one I said uh, he cooked here. Everyone seems happy except for me. <laughs> Took the words said, right out of said, your mouth. just like me. Yeah, I right. said, it's, it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ready for the the playoff uh, bus throwing. This is going to be some of Doc's best work. I get, It's Doc and it's Rick Patino this year, and they are both just saying very, very funny things, specifically designed to make me in particular <laughs> laugh. Rick Patino's like, I killed my whole team. I kill everybody in the NCAA. If I have to watch my whole team again, the team I built, it's awful. I'm not having fun. Thank you. Doc's last quote 
He was like, nobody on the road is showing up. And he, like, he literally threw the bus driver under the bus. He threw everybody, mm. <laughs> including the bus driver, under his own bus. It was like, this guy, unbelievable. What I will say for Doc... And even- the wheels on that bus, they, they don't really go that round. <laughs> mm. What I will say is, even if they lose in the first round, they did that last year, so... You know what I mean? Like, unless they get swept. You're like, not my fault. Yeah, yeah, unless they get swept, which I don't anticipate. I very much think the Bucks will win in the first round. I hope they don't, just could be very funny. But, uh, yeah, it's not a high bar he needs to clear just to be better than last year. Look at their third coach since then. They might not win a single round. Because as of right now, as of today, they will play the Miami Heat. Oh, no. In the first round. And I don't know. That's, I mean, half a game right now, so it could still be anybody, but. I don't. Spolster just probably licking his lips, waiting to coach against Doc Rivers. Man, he's like, man, you don't normally get this. I used to. It ain't Christmas every day. So it'd be Sixers Heat playing game. Uh, yes, Heat right now. Heat Sixers. They're half a game behind each other. Bulls have locked in the nine, and the Hawks have locked in the ten, baby. Okay. Can I say as I look at this, what jumps out to me, and it has nothing to do with any of the teams we've listed? No. Okay, moving on. Uh, what the Nets got going on, man? They What's the know. plan? They don't What's the? Uh, I, I. What's the plan? I sneaky think this has been the most embarrassing season, which is saying a lot, but the most embarrassing season <laughs> since they moved to Brooklyn because the Knicks have just been. Like, acting like Bridges is already on the team. And the Nets haven't fought back at, at once. Not even by accident. They've been like, hey, you know, he's, we've got him for four more fucking years. You know that, right? Right, Mikhail. Mikhail's like, I, I don't know. He's putting on the headphones to go on the Jalen Brunson, Josh Archer. He's dapping up DiVincenzo. You know, I, I, I'm a net for life. Uh, he's like, you know, I'll probably stay in Manhattan, man. I'll probably move my spot over, probably over. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a net for life, man. I don't, I don't entertain that that jazz i just what's the plan like they were bad under jacques vaughn i get it they haven't been good under kevin like I don't, this is not a good team that's why i don't oh. think it's necessarily a coaching issue but now i, I heard was it who collect somebody's talking about like mikhail bridges has two years left on this deal is what i'm checking now to confirm yes next year 23 million the following year 24 nine which is like a huge steal for Mikael mm-hmm. Bridges. If you're the Nets, though, what do you... Like, I feel like they see him as one of the stars of their big two, three, or whatever, because that always works so well for the Brooklyn Nets. Correct. But also, I feel like they should move him, honestly. Like, if you move him or this summer, this offseason, what's the highest... Like, I don't know how many, like, future... I mean, you could definitely get some, but I'm just looking like the Grizzlies are project. If the Grizzlies get a little lottery luck, in this terrible, terrible dread. But if they just jump up to like three or something, would you just move them there? Do you move them to the highest bid? Do you just move them to the Knicks? Either way, I I feel like going into things thinking we're going to keep getting more stars around Mikael Bridges does not feel like the move. No. No, I can't imagine they would. It's weird because I feel like a lot of teams, and I, I haven't, I've I've been thinking about this recently. I am not familiar at all with the new CBA. Like, I have no idea Mm -hmm. what's going to be allowed. I don't have time to read it. I'm just going to wait and see what happens and learn from that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if every team could even, like, teams that would want him to, like, put them over the top. If they're in cap hell, I don't know what they could. Because isn't it like if you're already over the apron, you can't even do, like, multiple contracts for one contract you can pretty much only send out one yeah i think you can't consolidate but the thing is because he's so like they're just guys that make more than sure. 20 like so he i think he's the rare case where it's like you might not really have to compile that much you could just take a i mean and also in the off season i don't know what, how it works in the off season trading into whatever cap space cap holds all that but he seems like one because his number is so low that a potentially like contending team might be able to do it. Cause I'm just looking at the free agents net. Like it, it might be Paul George. He hadn't signed yet. It might be LeBron. Siakam hadn't signed. Ananobi hadn't signed. I imagine that those, their current teams didn't trade for him to not max him. Sure. Harden, like DeRozan, Tobias Harris, Drew, maybe miles bridges. Like what is, what are these stars that you're going to add to this team right now? Who's not good and make some noise. 
I it feel like they should be going up because I with two years left, Bridges in the summer, maybe even draft night, you could get a haul out of somebody. For sure. If this draft really stinks, I probably wouldn't want any picks from it. Like I don't Memphis going up to three, it's like all right, I don't want even the third stinkiest player in this draft. I'm all set. But yeah, I, I do think if they were to put them, and I don't like to use the phrase up for sale, but if they were to be like, hey, we're interested, I do think they could get a lot for him. And I think that they should very much heed caution and not even leave their division to look at what the Raptors did and how much they fucked up the OG thing. Like if, if you've got bidders for bridges, sell. For sure sell. Because right now there's Ben Simmons. Uh, I know Claxton, I think, is up. I think he's restricted. He's a free. It's a, like, you got to make a decision on that as well. Right. Which I I just, I don't know what kind of deal he gets. Like, I'm not opposed to keeping Claxton. He's young enough and good enough. I just don't know what kind of deal right. he'd be looking at. And but Bridges. Yeah, Cam yeah, Thomas. Or no, not Cam Thomas. Excuse me. Cam Johnson. I'd be trying to, Cam trying to swing him too. Like, really tear it down to the studs. All the way down. Like, stink. Genuinely stink. This, what do they have, 30? They're the 11 seed wins. right now. Yeah, like, the worst wins. place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd build the entire plane out of Camp Thomas. Correct. And it, we're at least going to be entertaining. <laughs> there was a stat, and a Camp Thomas there. stat that popped up. It was like 20 straight games with at least one assist career high. <laughs> <laughs> That's me on 2K. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's really moving the ball at eight. Two assists to six turnovers. Like, oh, Magic Withers out there. I would tear it down, and I would sign a bunch of guys that you could, like veterans that you could play and trade at the deadline for just more stuff. That would that's what I would do. Yeah, because I guess the thing is, but they can't truly tear it down because they don't own their own picks from what they traded for uh, Jimbo. Sure. So they. It would be the case of getting some picks. That's why I was like, even if this is not a good draft, if you could get some, just get some type of young player in the pipeline. But also, is it even going to Is Sean Marks going to get to stay around as overseas? Is? is he going to get to hire his? I think it will be his fourth coaches. And I'm legit curious how many GMs get to stay around to hire four coaches when they haven't won four. I don't think he's won two playoff series. I think it, it might be one. Yeah, they beat the Jalen Brown less Celtics. Uh, in five games, couldn't even sweep. And then the next year, they got swept in the first round. They got rolled up, right? Yeah. And they, I mean, they were a KD correct shoe size away from beating the Bucks, but they didn't. So that <laughs> doesn't count, I fear. I'm looking, he got there in 2015 16, Sean Marks did. Okay. And now, to be fair, like their first years, they were stinking. That was like the years. The, they gave the picks to Boston. So right. that wasn't his issue. He inherited that, got him to a playoff team. But they've made the playoffs two, three, four, five times and have won one playoff series. They're 9-21, and 30% win percentage in the playoffs for Sean Marks, 45% win percentage overall with Durant, Kyrie, Harden, Jared Allen, Karis LeVert playing some good ball elsewhere, Kenny Atkinson, a solid coach, or a solid assistant coach elsewhere. And now it's like Mikael Bridges is our guy. Bridges, Simmons, and whoever we – we're going to sign DeMar DeRozan. That's our big three next year. Just get us a coach, Sean. You're good at this. Well, the, Give us another coach. The other advantage, fake advantage, but advantage they had was they were the competent team in New York. And they can't even say that anymore. Do you just call the Nets, or excuse me, the Knicks directly? Can you trade them there, or do you have to? It's like he's going to end up. We think we could get the most from them. Like I just don't think Donovan Mitchell just doesn't feel like it makes sense with the Knicks roster as is. Mikael Bridges would make sense. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell feels more like a Net now that we're talking about it. Like he's a Mets fan, anyways. Send him to the other uh, New York <laughs> team. If you're Donovan Mitchell, would you re and? Like, say you're not re-signing Cavs or trading you. Would you rather go to the Spurs or the Nets? Oh, the Spurs for sure. Not even a debate. But what about the Big Apple? He's from New York, some part of it. I'm sure they'll play there. I don't there. think the cool parts, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll get there once, maybe twice a year. Uh... <laughs> that I feel like they would do the trade for Donovan Mitchell. And it's like, yeah, now we've got these two. They would talk themselves into being like, okay, when Ben Simmons' money expires, now we'll really have some – we can really get in this mix. And it's like, 
Is it? Because you might be paying Claxton. It'll be you'll be paying Cam Johnson. It'll be time to pay Cam Thomas something. Not that he gets a max, but he might. The way he getting buckets. Uh, he... Cam Thomas is electric, mm-hmm. but no, nah, I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, I mean the Knicks, <clears throat> since they keep not trading all their first round picks, but still making really good trades, still have all those first round picks. So it might be a decent place, but like we said, they have two in this draft, and I don't want either of those. So I would have to see how many they can offer moving forward. And then you run into the problem, well, if I trade him there, him, Bronson, pretty, I assume that's going to be pretty good for a while. So how far away do I have to want these picks to when they actually benefit me? Like what sixth grader am I trading for right now? Right. Well, that's it's the thing, like even if you don't, like this draft or, or hate it, there's still going to be good players that sure. come from it. I just wonder if because the Knicks already kind of know who they are. It's like we're just dra- we only want to draft role players that know they're going into a role player situation. And could we get that cheap while we're paying? Like it's gonna be time to pay Brunson. I think I think he's got an option two years from now. So I think he's under the contract for one more year. It'd be time to give him some big money. Uh, and Anobi's gonna get big money this summer, right? You pay like DiVincenzo, Hart. I don't know what Hart's contract situation is, to be honest. Ju- you have to make some kind of decision on Julius. Right. Because I know he's paid, but maybe he's one of the trade out to save some space. So would you want some rookies? Even if it's like, we hate this class, but we need cheap guys that can contribute now while we think we have somewhat of a win. Like, we think we can contend in the East if we're healthy. Which they can. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I do also think... They, they're kind of in, a, in an interesting spot, so they want to pay OG. He's obviously been unbelievable for them when healthy, and I don't think he's like a career injury guy moving forward or anything like that. Oh, no, man. No, I, I think he's he's had like 70 games, like once, I think is once. Yeah. So he's he's had his, his woes. For sure, and I mean, there's a reason he fell to Toronto in the first place because he broke his leg right. at Indiana. Like it, Some guys just get bit by that, but... Randall's out for the rest of the year, obviously, too. That's where it's like, all right, what if instead of paying either of these guys, we just paid Bridges? Or what if we use Julius's money to get Bridges and we just kind of played two wings with Bridges and OG? That's It's interesting. As I I put up the Knicks cap space now just to see, because he's so cheap, I don't... Like Hardenstein, they have Alec Burks. That's ten million coming off. Hartenstein will either like they have to make some type of decision on him. Bogdanovich, his money next year is not fully guaranteed, and he's at twenty million. So I wonder, like, could it just be Bogdanovich and the picks for Bridges? Like, we don't even have to make a decision on Randall yet. Sure, we can tr- like try this for a year, see what happens before we resign Bridges, before we resign Brunson, but run this for at least a year because they. The books are in good shape, I fear. They are. Okay, Josh Hart has been paid. He already has been. So his starts at 18 next year. Nick's in a good spot, dare I say. They're in a great spot. And I know they got DiVincenzo for a song. Um... Traded for Serge Ibaka, don't forget. <laughs> Straight up. <clears throat> and Precious has been great for them since he got there. And I'm not saying he can replace Randall, but yeah. if I'm playing OG and... Uh, Bridges I've got a center I've got him coming off the bench McBride too he's looked unbelievable mm-hmm. year two so if they are going to stick with getting role players I don't even think they need to hit immediately because McBride didn't look necessarily playable as a rookie because he was a rookie I wasn't a shot at him That's just it is what it is right. year two he came in he looked completely different from preseason uh, up until now, where they're they're guarding, they're, they're, go get Shea with the game on the line. Like that's just because Shea, Got you. Yeah, yeah, just because Shea doesn't hit the shot, like a very tough shot, doesn't mean like they don't trust him implicitly to be that kind of guy. And to his credit, he's done a lot of really great things this year. So yeah, it, it's it's a weird time where I just like kind of trust the Knicks, but it seems like they all very well, very much want Mikael Bridges, and they should. That's what, like as I think they would still be able to run out just if you just essentially swap the Bogdanovich and Burks money, you probably would have to lose Hart, Hartenstein, but you would be able to keep Randall Brunson, Ananobi, Robinson Hart, Divincenzo, and add Bridges. Like those would be your top. Was it seven? 
and and then have these draft picks. Like again, there are guys that maybe not a star, but if I know my top seven is that, would I dread? Like, I just keep hearing, like Ryan Dunn, the Virginia guy. They're like he's the best defender in college basketball. Like that's just what he does. You just throw him out, get Kalel, like whatever a backup big, like backup backup big, because they seem to be developed. Like Quentin Grimes, not that they developed him into a superstar, but into a trade asset right. to get Bogdanovich, and his money might allow them to get something. So they just like they're they're kicking it down the can until they want to make a move. Bridges just feels like like the way Donovan Mitchell was set up is the perfect. Like he's from New York. He wants to be there. The star they haven't had. It's like Bridges fits like position wise. You got the Villanova thing. The contract is dirt cheap for two years. That feel like the move. It's just would would the Nets hand him across the hall or should they? Yeah, they may just be like, there's no price you pay that we would accept. Like none. Um, even if it were like an OG sign and trade. Because that could at least give the Nets another asset to swing. Even then, but if I'm the Knicks, I'm like, what leverage are we are going to got a Nets? No, like, you could trade sure. him somewhere else. We still feel like we'll just get him in two years. Y'all thought Donovan Mitchell was going to walk here? Wait till Mikhail, wait till we got his locker set up 12 months before and we lose that second round pick for tampering. From a roster standpoint, do you think it makes sense to prioritize Randall over Hartenstein? It's a sentence I never thought I would say, but especially if you do more if you do this trade, not in the vacuum that they already are. But it's like, um, they've already had issues with everyone else in their front court staying healthy. Hartenstein's kind of just like been the rock for them all year. Mm -hmm. And he seems to just mesh really well personality wise with the roster, Tibbs, the fan base. Like that's where it's the, the brothers on that team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know that you can get rid of that guy. Well, I mean, it's not even get rid. He's unrestricted. So that's where it's sure. like, you might want to keep him all you want. He just gets either a starting gig or somebody's like, we'll just give you 20 a year. And a Spurs. Um, I don't even know who else got cap space, but it's like, well, Julius contract next year, it's 30 and then a player option for 32. If he stays healthy next year, he's going to turn that down. It, it would just make finance. Even if he stays, I think he would turn down 32. The number then, the guy's going to be starting contracts in the 50s and 60s. So even if he, I think he get more than thirty. If he stays healthy next year, I think he do for for the long term, scratch. Even if not from New York, but that's very like I thought it ran for two more years. Now if he gets worst case scenario, he picks up the option. But even he's expiring from then. You're not. Right. You don't have him for six more years, or anything. And depending on how much the cap jumps. As they see, that's why I'm like, could you get Bridges right now and then just figure out the CBA with everybody else? Like the Suns were like, we're not reading the CBA. We're gonna we're gonna do what we want. We want to be a seventh seed in the West for the next Awful. four years with no assets. Awful. And uh, the, the the collective dick sucking that the basketball writers hey. of America did for the Phoenix Suns were like, oh, look at all these. One plus ones they've signed. This is light years ahead. Eric Gordon. Yeah, they just yeah. signed shitty Kate player the, yeah, after yeah. shitty. Yeah, most of them are on the fucking nets. Like that, the amount, <laughs> the amount of dog shit that they sign. People are like, "Ooh, buddy, this team." I like. I haven't heard anyone even float them as like a dark horse, which is what they usually do for a team that's underperformed. I just don't see it, man. Like also, because the thing is, they Royce O'Neal's played well. Grayson Allen. Who was that? I think it was Bassini. They were talking about Grayson Allen. Like, be shocked for what he gets this summer. Sure. Just as a wing. Not a two-way wing, but, like, he'll get picked on in the playoffs. But regular season, fine wing, shooting the hell out of the ball. You look up and he gets $100 million He'll get more than DiVincenzo like got that. last year, for sure. Oh, yeah. I think he got, what, four for 50, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, very reasonable. Uh, yeah, he'll <laughs> – yeah, he'll – they were like, just don't be surprised for the 20 minutes. The Suns can't keep that. I don't – that's where I think the new CBA – there's no way. They got Durant, 47, Bill, 46. Booker starts – oh, excuse me. I was looking at last year. Next year, Durant, Bill, and Booker. That's $150 million. <laughs> That Right there. The salary cap for this year is $136 I was going to say, yeah, that's already over. <laughs> you got Nurkic at 18. You have to do – some or, or replace Royce O'Neal and Grayson Allen's production. Then you got your one plus one, your Kogi, Gordon, Damian Lee, Eubanks. 
They have David Roddy and Nas Little at six million. So they feel like the I don't know the anti. T- at what t- at what point is it like? Do we does Kevin Durant ask out one? <laughs> Two, I don't think Bookwood just like he just got paid. I think he's all set. Bill, I think he loves I think it he's there. Good. He's never had it better. But is Kevin Durant having fun right now? Is he feeling like he's maximizing his basketball window, or is he just like you know I'm just good to I'm just good to run it out, man? Like LeBron's like, hey, or, I could be worse, man. I we'll be in the play in. I get my buckets. I drink wine. <sighs> Yeah, Phoenix. I've got it all. Phoenix is yeah. out of the play, and like they're they're a game. Not to, they're the what seven the six. Or, they're yeah. a game up on the Pelicans. Barely Although I'm using right. Basketball Reference, which takes a full 24 hours to yeah, update yeah, everything. No, they're, they're the one seed now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't. They haven't had a bad seed. I mean, they they haven't been healthy at all. No, not at all. Uh, yeah. But when they made that trade. And I know it's a lot of like knee jerk reactions, but people were like, "Who's beating this team?" And it tur- turns out pretty much everybody is. Uh, just about everybody is beat. The, the trainer, the training staff. <laughs> some some thirty one losses. Game back of the Mavs. The Mavs have looked great. So it's very funny. One game yeah. separates how I feel about those teams. That's like the Suns will be a three seed in the East, right? Like they're winning sixty percent of their game and still. Like they're playing well right now. I just like yeah, it would be Oklahoma City Suns right now. That would be the series. And that's where I would it be this team with playoff experience versus the the young gun? That'd be an interesting matchup, but I just don't know if I trust the Suns. K D four times. I didn't know they were winning sixty percent of their games, but yeah. KD four times in Oklahoma City. Maybe four. Right. If they if things go to the max four. That's interesting. Uh, like again, they could get up to the five. Like if they got the Clippers, Clippers hadn't been looking like they've rebounded a little, but not as high. Yeah. Of those, the Mavericks. I don't know if I want to play the Mavericks right now, man. Well, they're playing well. I was thinking about this walking my dog the other day, and I don't know what the Celtics would look like right now if he did this. Do you think Kyrie ever thinks like, man, I should have just stayed? No. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't think that thought has ever crossed. It may not <laughs> ever have, crossed his mind. Yeah. But if he had just played and and played is doing a lot because he hasn't exactly played every game since since that happened. But it's like, man, oh man, Kyrie, uh, Derek White, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and whoever the fuck would be pretty good. I would argue. I think he goes into Dallas. He's like, I'm not the best player here. I don't know if he says that in Boston. No matter how good Tatum or Brown get, I feel like. It's like when I walked into the locker room, I was the best player. I'm still playing at an all-star level, so I'm still that guy. I don't know if you get the Jalen and Jason. You like get this year. I don't think you get Jalen. You know what I'm saying? I think Tatum still yeah. becomes Tatum, but I don't know if Jalen ever becomes as maxed out as he what has. he is right now. Yeah. yeah, I think that part's the part where I'm like, yeah, I'm. I'm listen, I'm very okay with where we're at, <laughs> but mm. I was just True. thinking like. <laughs> Because this has been, like, the most positivity around Kyrie playing basketball for a while, this stretch. Hmm? and Too long. It's been a while, yeah. It's been quite a while. And it just made me think, like, man, he could have avoided so much of the shit he created if he just re-signed. And, like, what what does the rest of the NBA look like? Does Durant even go to Brooklyn? Because part of it was because he wanted to play with Kyrie. Like so much, like who knows James Harden is like who who fucking knows? I, mean, I don't even know if that's in the top five of what if for Kyrie, Correct. just because of the career he's like. What if he just said that for Cleveland's like, man, you know what? Because they made the finals right after they traded. Oh him yeah, still. beat his team. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so what if if in Bro- he just gets the jab, uh, <laughs> or or gets it doctored up, or gets uh, no Amazon account? Like a lot. There was a lot. I was gonna say, there's so many, so many what ifs. He never saw those Lakers fans uh, protesting. Yeah, I don't, but right again, right now, they playing some good ball, and Luca, bad boy. Uh, this he keeps uh, hitting these underhand shots uh, from half court. Mm. Feels illegal. Lively's unlocked so much for them. He's been tremendous. Like just nailing a draft pick can do so much for your team. So much. I was gonna say nailed the the whole. I, I guess the Grant Williams thing. I was never 
No, that's important. Not so much a fan of it. Worked out weird, but I think it was a good swing. I just thought, why did wouldn't you just do that for PJ Washington? Like PJ was the last person to sign. I think like the literal last of restricted guys to sign. It's like it, Charlotte wasn't making him no priority. No, but could you have just cut the Grant Williams middleman out and ended up where you are? But maybe you end up the same place. I would imagine. I don't want to give him too much credit. I'm sure they tried that. I can't imagine how difficult it is to try and trade with the Hornets. Like they. <laughs> they're like sign and trade you don't right. we, we don't we don't engage in such foolery should they like should this just be should they start looking to build around brandon miller and whatever pick they get in this draft like basically should Lamelo be on the trade block or is he still are you still looking at him as a building block or like i saw he's played i think it's 50 games the past two years he's got the lower body stuff which i just don't I just don't know with Lon- I don't know if it's fair to type Lonzo's what's going on with him with Lamelo, but it does concern me. Sure, yeah, I mean he he played fifty one games his rookie year, started thirty one, one rookie of the year. What a class! Uh, played seventy five games the next year, All Star. Played thirty six last year, twenty two this year. Um, I know there's questions about his defense, his overall effort. When he played this year, he was at 43, 36, 87, at 24, eight, eight assists, five rebounds. Like I, mm. I still think he's, a, he's still 22. Right, that's the thing. He's still 22. He's already doing that. Has it uh, translated to wins and or, uh, plenty of losses? Oh, not not enough mm, wins. Definitely losses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe he already he already signed his extension. Oh yeah. So it has not kicked next year. Thirty five next year. Year after 38, 41, 44, 46. Is that a swing the Nets take? I was gonna say Spurs. I went. I was like, would the Spurs be like, let's? This is worth. We're because we're, we're not gonna pay a dollar for a dollar. Sure. Just with his injury concern, the contract though, because I just the names I've heard for the Spurs. Like, is it gonna be Trey? Like Donovan Mitchell, Lamelo, and I think for different reasons you can make different cases for those guys. But is it like, hey, we're we don't think we can get a guy that young, six seven, this kind of skill, ever, like ever in free <laughs> for the next five years, and for like ever, we're paying him while Wimbenyama's cheap. So that, but that would be a big swing. But it's like if he's playing, if he gets back to. Like, the year he played 75 games, I think that was the year they lost to the Hawks in the play-in. So he was, ke- like, keeping a team about league average, keeping the Hornets at that, which sure, is impressive. Yeah. So I just I just don't know about that bill of health, man. It's bill of health, and it's like, what, what percentage does he hit his highest outcome? That's what you're trading for, you know what I mean? Is it 25%? Mm-hmm. That feels like a lot, honestly. I think it's like 10%. He becomes... Uh, the superstar he looked like he was going to become. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be a bad player, mm. but I think I would rather not make any move than make that. Like, I've got Wemby, you know what I mean? We've already got that. Do I want to trade for someone who thinks he's better than Wemby? He <laughs> might be right. He might be right. I fear he's not. I fear he is wrong. <laughs> I, I think I'm all... I'd rather trade for Grant Williams. I'd much rather trade for Grant Williams if I'm the Spurs. Nah, that's risky business, too. I just, if I'm the Hornets, I'm just trying to think like Brandon Miller's look good. Like I've right. seen Reed Shepard to them in some months. I don't know. There's varying degrees on how good you think he'll be, but I do think he'll be a very solid, helpful NBA player. Is it like, could we just, ah, yeah, fleece the net, the net strike out. And it's like, hey, LaMelo and Mikael Bridges, man, we just, gosh, just give us three unprotected. We won't even hit you over the head like that, man. And you just have them right now. You see, like, for a team like the Nets, who don't have Victor Wembanyama, I think it makes plenty of sense to take that swing. You think you get a marketable player who, if he hits, same reason you trade for Ben Simmons. If he becomes the player we know he can be, great. And most likely you just have LaMelo and Ben Simmons getting fits off on the bench. Like, that's that's most likely what this becomes. Listen, Sean Marsh would get a contract extension off that sure. from, the, from the history. Joe Saab would prefer that. He's like, I know where my stars are, damn it. It's all he's ever wanted. On my bench. Yeah. yeah. It's all he's ever wanted. So, yeah, I I can't do it if I'm the Spurs. The risk, 
outweighs the reward by so much. Nah, if I'm the Spurs, I ain't. Now, again, my my little one year is maybe some restricted. I'm just curious. Like, would Charlotte, would they trade him for 30 cents on the dot? Like, would the whole point be, like, hey, he's your problem now? Could we get him for that? But also, where he's locked into a contract, guys are already started signing deals where they're making 60. Sure. Not that 40 is ever going to be nothing like, but if you look up at four years and it's like, hey, he did just kind of beat those early injury woes. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's, he's just, cooked. Like, yeah. I don't think he's got no future. It's just if I'm the Spurs and I have the most valuable asset in all of the league right now, I'm being ultra careful with who I put around that asset. And I don't know if anyone from the Ball family tree fits that. All three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leangelo can't, can't even watch the game, son. I don't, <laughs> we're blacking out in your would, home. Er, would 27 teams immediately trade Wimbledon for their best player? Trade for women, Yama? Yeah. Yeah, trade their best player for yes. straight up for women, Yama. So who are the three teams? Who says no? Or who are the two teams? Denver Denver and Boston? Are those the teams you've... No, Denver and Golden State. And even then, I, oh, they might be like, God. Steph, buddy. We, yeah. we, it's not a talent. Like, just a... We, he's done so much. He means so much. I think they do... <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. Listen, we'll call you in San Antonio. Uh, uh, Steph, we'll hang your jersey, like all that. Steph's oh, like, man. I prefer, I can, I can build the wall myself down here. This is great. This is, <laughs> this is a win-win. Yeah. Uh, no, Giannis and Jokic. I think those are the two. Giannis is kind of interesting, but I think those are the two. I saw somebody, I think it was a Women Yama Muse did sure. it. And I think they were a lot more polite. Like they had the last row was like, oh, it would kill us to do this. But we'd have to do it. I'm like, buddy, 20 teams would be like, sigh of fucking Nora. <laughs> so fast. Like, to, 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 and it'd be the right choice. I, like, I think I'd put the heat with Jimmy on there before the Bucks. Nah, Pat, man, Pat Riley say, man, take that coffee. <laughs> uh, brew that shit somewhere else. Buddy. Doesn't fit the culture, whether it's, I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you've heard. <laughs> Bonjour, <laughs> Victor. <laughs> You know, parts of Miami look like uh, Paris. I'll, I'll, show, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you around. So the wolves would ship off Ant. It's a quick meeting. It's a quick. They do the whole Anthony. They call him Anthony yeah. when they call him Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, you've been a pillar of this community for some four seasons now. Uh, uh, having said yeah. that, Sayonara. Yeah, get ready to learn saying it. Oh, he would turn into such. Like you think the Jordan comparisons already exist? I that's where it's like, do we want to be the team that traded Anthony Edwards? Because we're the team that traded for Gobert. Scared money sure. doesn't make. No, money. I get it. I, you have to do it, but I think Anthony Edwards would hit another level immediately. Uh, the Thunder would trade Shea. I mean, Wemby the mm-hmm. the whole reason they did what they did. They didn't even fucking get him. Uh, the Clippers, yeah, of course. The Mavs with Luca. I don't know that. I don't know that. That's I don't know that Cuban yeah. would. I forgot. He out. I mean, he's sure. still in some, but with the new, with new person, be like, I didn't draft him. I, don't I know. think Cuban still has personnel decisions. I did forget, <laughs> like, that. which is bizarre. So does Michael Jordan. So does Glenn. T- <laughs> Selling a team now is just the sweet spot. You get all of the new money, and it's just like, ah, uh, yeah, draft him. Can they still listen? Pelicans couldn't wait to do it. Oh come on! The Lakers, of course. The Kings. Like I thought like Paolo was in like the man. They'd really hate to do it. And it's like uh, they slightly dislike. Yeah, doing I don't it. think they would be all all that caught up. Yeah, the Warriors. They probably wouldn't, and it would be a monumental mistake. <laughs> they'd be like, y- y'all don't want Draymond and Clay instead. You can have them both. You can have them both. And Moses Mookie. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what to do with that guy. You can. Good luck. But it would stink. But Tatum's wearing cowboy hats in a heartbeat, right? Deuce too. We got enough cowboy hats for the little one, but he's yeah. Is Tatum even the best player on the team? Uh, Derek White going no, back brother. to San Antonio. I feel Cornet for a Victor <laughs> yeah. Strader. I've seen some Sfee numbers recently that you wouldn't believe. His per thirty sixes. <laughs> no, it's probably. I think it's yeah. Yoka, Yoka, Giannis, Luke. Nobody domestic is being traded <laughs> for Victor Wimbledon. Where listen, 
You talk about the Suns winning 60% of their games. We've won 80% of our games, you understand? I, I, the amount of people... We've been podcasting for almost a decade at this point. The amount of people I've, I've hypothetically traded Jason Tatum for is <laughs> astounding. I don't know that you could do it. Like, Wemby, Wemby's obviously going to be better. Like, obviously. In like two weeks, sure. man. It's not a knock on Tatum. No, no. Not a knock on Tatum at all. I don't know that you can do it. I don't know that you can do it. Oh, no. We, uh, 19 wins, I see. Jason, thank you so much for the way you embrace Boston. You'll forever <laughs> be a part of our culture for these past uh, seven years. The highs, the lows. You grew as a man. Uh, sayonara. We say all that to say. <laughs> if we win the title, uh, like, bring in the croissant. Yeah, if we win the title, I forget you don't have to make this trade today. If we win the the title this Correct. year, yeah, blow it off. Uh, trade for him and Yama. <laughs> oh, you have to. We already here. It's yeah, free money. Yeah, well, I, uh, we can't win the more titles. Yeah, do it. Uh, I do think the Bucks would consider. Especially Giannis has the weird knee thing that pops up every once in a while. I think they. I think they would do it. I mean, I'd do it because every once in a while he's just like, you know, I love Chicago. Right? <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> like y'all know my wife from Detroit. Yeah. Like you know, I'd live in other places. <laughs> Cavs. Everybody else, yeah. I think, gets a swift no. Now I'm going to say this because I've drawn a lot of comparisons to this year's Knicks team and the Isaiah Thomas Hospital Celtics of like 2016. Like they're, it's the same picture, Your Honor. I feel like plenty of Knicks fans would be like, we wouldn't trade Brunson. Much like a lot of Celtics fans are like, I wouldn't trade Isaiah Thomas for anyone. I feel like Knicks fans have, have grown to have that level of appreciation. I'm not saying all of them, uh, but I get that emotional attachment to a guy who's dragged you from the depths of hell to relevancy. I get it, Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for taking a chance with us. We watched you at Villanova. We've seen the rise of your career. Knicks fan Ike says, Sayonara, Brunson. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> which I get. Having said that, yeah, you've lived in Texas before, Jalen. You know the ropes. <laughs> you... Dallas isn't that far. Uh, would yeah, Sixers fans trade and bead? Sixers fan whiskers would. Yeah, nah, Popovich, you'll love it there, Joel. They have internet, all the shit you like. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, X, there. As I looked through everybody, I was even trying to think. I was like, what if, like, if I guaranteed you the team's best player now, and I, but I also guaranteed you Cooper Flag next year. How many teams still say? Oh yeah, I mean, we take Wimbanyama. Listen, I I root for Cooper Flag. Uh, tremendously. See you later, pal. Like, <laughs> I, I watched the McDonald's game the other day. Ron Harper's son was the best player out there by far. Was a Rutgers has two McDonald's player uh, uh, McDonald's All Americans now. Was AJ so, in the game? There's that. Uh, who AJ uh, Deban stuff? Uh, yes. He. I think he's, he's like a junior. Is he still undecided? He's not even decided. unless he well, reclassified. He he may have, because we've got, Jaden Quaintance is playing in Kentucky. He was 16 playing in the game. So he'll be, at, or he'll be in college for at least two years. So I think we're just punting all those rules. I'm fine. Yeah. AJ is 17, just turned 17. I don't think he reclass. Yeah. Class of 25. So he didn't reclassify. He's just okay. that deal. We're, but he hasn't committed to No, yet, right? no. He's talking to Auburn, USC. This is from 24-7 Sports. Auburn, USC, Alabama, Baylor, Boston College. What What's happened to your once? Out on him. Out on him. He's from Brockton. He, that's why. That's why BC gets mm -hmm. the... It's like when Randy Moss didn't talk to West Virginia. And then when Randy, you gotta take when Randy Moss did Randy yeah. Moss things and West Virginia was like, no, fuck you. We're all set. No, thanks. AJ's. Listen, I, again, I, I love Cooper Flag. I'm all in on Cooper Flag. AJ is the one. AJ is a problem. I, let me see what school, what's his, uh, the schooling decision he makes. That'll tell me all I need to know about His interest on all of these schools is cool, which I I don't know what that means. A cool guy. <laughs> like Paolo and the pick that becomes AJ or Cooper Flag. For Victor, which side would you rather? It's got to be Victor. It has to be. 
I thought you said AJ was the truth, man. He is. He's he's six nine. <laughs> yeah, Victor used to be twelve years old. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> I think AJ is going to be an absolute delight in the uh, in the NBA. Like, I think he's going to be really good. Victor Wembanyama is Victor Wembanyama. I don't. There's nothing I can say to that. I feel like that's the like the youngest like blue a Chet I get like Chet and. The, I feel like they'd just be like, we get the chance to put Shea with Wimbenyama. We would just do, and still keep Jalen Williams. Oh, oh my God. What luck we And just sign, draft Bronny, sign LeBron. What luck we have. Yeah. And, like, I, I'm all in on AJ. He's 17. We've seen plenty of 17-year-olds two years later be like, oh, yeah, I'd still draft him, but he's not, like, a clear 1-1. One, one. Even this shit draft that we keep talking about, Buzelis was the the number one lock a year ago, and now he's barely a lottery pick in a bad draft. That G League Ignite book can be crazy because Ron Holland was up there too. Right. I don't know what his stock's looking like currently. He's still the uh, Tankathon still has him in the first round, so I think I hope so. <laughs> that was like one one four months ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I think every just about every team outside of. Denver and Dallas. I don't know that Brad would trade Tatum. Whether or not it's the right thing to do is is another dis- uh, conversation. Listen, I think Brad would trade anybody. That boy be trading. That boy be trading. He, again, I ain't dra- Jason. We had some good years, my man. <laughs> Reminds me of a story I told Gordon Hayward. I'll tell you. I walk out the door. Uh, <laughs> Can I have your ID badge? A pint, <laughs> a pint of blood is worth a gallon of gold. Enjoy San Antonio, my friend. Yeah, it's a it's a wild scene. I'm I'm interested to see what Brad does this off season because he has some decisions upon him. Uh, April first, should he take the Kentucky job? I don't know if that's something he's considering at all. Quite frankly, it's a uh, lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Like if they win, I think he might get friskier than if they lose. You know what I mean? Like you were talking about bridges. If they win the title this year, which fucking, I fucking pray they do. I don't want to hear it anymore. If they win the title this year, are they like, hey, you know what? Cutting Jalen's number in half and replacing him with Bridges does make a lot of sense. Nah, I can't get, only because that, like, that's a money play. It's for sure. Y'all doing it to, if y'all doing it to, yeah, if y'all doing it to save money. No, I, I, nah. Listen, you think I want to do that? Of course not. But. Right, that's where it's like they start playing money. What ball? if the Nets throw in three more picks again in a pick swap? <laughs> yeah, what if it's Braddy? What if I told you Mikael Bridges was a third of the money uh, that Eric Chavez was, and we can get him right here playing small four? But it's like I don't know. Like we got the one. That was that was the plan. We just need to get over the hump, get mm-hmm. the one. What if they swing Chris Stapps? Drew, obviously, does he opt in? April 1st was the day they could open up negotiation windows uh, since trading for him. It's the 7th. They still haven't done anything. Are they waiting to see what happens? Uh, Derek White eligible for an extension? I I can't imagine. He, like I think he's the number two most safest player on the team behind Tatum. And maybe Horford, just because there's obviously nowhere he's going. <laughs> no trade value. You well, he also makes man. like $10 million a year, so there's nothing you can even trade that for. Right. So that's where it's like, yeah, I don't I don't know what happens this offseason, and I'm a little scared, if we're being honest. That's what, Y'all better win this fucking title, buddy boy. At length, we've talked about how there's no such thing as windows. They better win. <laughs> they better win this title, buddy boy. It's sitting right there. And it'll be, uh, I can't even say no. Like, injuries are going to happen like, to them, to everybody. That's just going to, unpredictable, but very predictable. Outside, they've been the best team this year. They're going to have home court on everybody. They better win this fucking <laughs> title this year. <laughs> yeah, I'd appreciate it. Definitely would appreciate it. Tillman, you got a Max Tillman this offseason. Like, was- That's what I'm saying. It's a numbers game. <laughs> what if I told you I had Victor Wimbanyama? <laughs> But he was half his height and half his <laughs> half his price, Billy. Xavier Tillman, senior. Somebody, uh, there's Seth Part now, perhaps. Somebody broke down Victor's actual shooting on step backs because 
I guess the way they get put into the system isn't always accurate. Like, they get convoluted with other types of shots, and so it's not right. accurate. Pure step back. Yeah, just all, like, all, like catch and shoot sometimes get counted as, like, just fucking dumb. Uh, so he was like, I, I rewatched all of his makes, and I've, I've charted true step backs. He's shooting 47%. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with it, man. Like, it's, I think the thing now, it's within the box scores that's terrifying me now, the assist are creeping right. up. Like, we keep, you keep seeing the crate 20, 10, 5 block, 4 steals, but it's like 8 assists. It's like, I've seen some of them guys he passing to. So for him to consistently be getting 7, 8 assists, He's dropping off some dimes. Oh, for sure. What? And I'm just terrified, like, a full, like, real offseason. Like, what he just looks like next. He's just like, I want to play summer league just to show her. Like, I'm up to 250, and I'm ready to kick ass for two games and then be shut down so you can all be terrified of what's to come. How much longer does he have before he makes, like, a run, like a playoff run? 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> you think sophomore year Wemby will get shit on if he's not like in the first, at least in the first round of the playoffs? If they if they stink this bad or not, or it, I think they should. Their goal should be be in the play in mix, like essentially what the Rockets right. did this year. They fell just short, but it's like we were pretty competitive all year. Saw some real growth from multiple players on the team, and most of our games counted because we had something like we oh, were yeah. just twenty games under all year. He might get two years, and after that, I don't know if he can ever lose in the first round. Like oh just, that's just it's just where we at with it. Skip Bayless, that man is eight foot nine. You're telling me <laughs> that they he lost four times in seven games, and he talks shit. He does. Like him talk. That's going. That's going fast forward the the window, unnecessarily so, but. Once he said, "Yeah, school would be number one if I was never born," that's when that's when his clock started to start winning game. And he French man, they yelling at him now. I look at that three point two win shares. Tatum's at ten point one. I like I, just fundamentally with it. This is not how you build a basketball team. I'm building something bigger than <laughs> leads the league in blocks. Uh, twenty one twenty one eleven four. Uh, yeah, four point eight stocks per game. He's all right. I'm just saying. And again, one day he's going to weigh more than 219 pounds. <laughs> career highs. And again, this is just from the season because he's only played in the one. His <laughs> career high in points, 40. His career high in rebounds, 20. Career high in assists, 10. Steals, 6. Blocks, 10. It's kind of just what Two triple that. doubles on the season. That I'm. He's going to average a 5x5 five five one year. He's going to... I don't know, do things we've never seen of. And that's why it's really going to hurt trading Clint Capella <laughs> and the pick that becomes Cooper Flag for a, a straight up swap. Atlanta Cooper Flag is what I'm here for. Very much here for. Listen, Trey, hey, man, the conference fine. We'll always have that, man. Uh, I also don't. San Antonio, you're from that way. My guy, you'll love it there. I don't know if Flag ends up being the number one overall pick, and I don't say that as a knock to him. He just likes to take a lot of like transition, crossover, pull up threes that I don't know is it's going to be allowed to happen at Duke. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't know if his full like I think he's going to be a legitimate wing in the NBA, and I don't know if the college game is going to let him show off everything he can really do. Then he should go uh, NBL with Bronny. Play, play for the Breakers. I don't hate it, but, I mean, he's joining. Now, everything I hear, he's more, like, they're excited about the defense. Yes, he's a really good defender. What he does defensively. And I, Coach K, he'd never had that cross-up stuff. John Shire might be, like, hey, this is what we need to keep getting guys like this. Possible. So. Certainly possible. I but, yeah, he, he blocks a lot of jump shots, too. Not just like, oh, I'm bigger than all these other high schoolers. Let me pin you off the backboard. He mm -hmm. does that, too. But he blocks even in like the national championship that they just played in, and all the like I follow every big basketball account, multiple of them like the ball is lifes and and more of like the high school prospect ones are saying this uh, Monteverde team is maybe the best high school team ever. Maybe a, maybe I'm an old man yelling at the clouds. It doesn't feel like it. Like I I hear Coop. They're saying the team he's on yeah. now is the yes. 
I mean, since what? Since the last Montverde team, they had like Scotty Barnes. They do compare and, it to that team, yeah. <laughs> they sure do. It was like seven people went D1 and first round or something crazy like yeah. that. Yeah, and this one, I know I'm not as deep in the weeds with uh, prospects as I used to be, but I, I only know Flag's name, and that's a me problem, but plenty of other high school teams like Oak Hill back in the day when they would have like Rondo and, and Josh Smith. I'm not saying that team would beat necessarily mm. this uh, Verde team, but even like when Mello was there, like I, I feel like there were just more pro-ready names there. And I'm not saying this team doesn't have multiple future pros, mm. but I wonder if they have multiple Hall of Famers. You know what I mean? I don't know what level of pro they are. Because even that other team, it was like Cade, Scotty Barnes, somebody else who was like really good at this level yeah. too. I think it was it was like six first. I was like, why? You shouldn't even be allowed to compete. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Derek Whitehead, they went to yeah. Duke. Cade Cunningham, Moses Moody, Ryan Nimhart, Scotty Barnes, Caleb Houston, Dayron Sharp, and then a white guy named Keegan Harvey from Australia. Okay. All right. Yeah, he, he loaded. They went thirty three and zero uh, this Montverde team with flag. <laughs> Trying to pull up the roster. Poor Cade Cunningham. I feel like he's fine. He ain't been paid yet. I don't know if that's so. Like once the guys get that rookie max, you out of my hair. I feel like the team had seven guys get drafted. I think it's kind of like guaranteed. With I'd be shocked if he didn't get that max. Monty Williams was starting uh, Killian Hayes. I don't like. I don't know what Detroit has going on. They trade for nine centers. I, if they, they – go get an offer. So this is Cooper Flagg, Derek Queen, uh, who's their, their center. I saw him dunking on all sorts of people in the championship game. Liam McNeely. I don't know about all that. Caden uh, Allen, Lucas Lima. Too many whites so far on this team. Oh. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where are they going? I need to know these schools they going to before I make a decision. Lucas Lima is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. So I, I'll, he has maybe beat the white allegations. I need to know where his grandparents were in the 1940s. I was like, I need to see it. He might have the blondest hair, the bluest eyes. <laughs> Asa Newell, he's from Athens. Uh, you're Georgia, not the other one. He's 6'10". Caleb Gaskins, 6'8", guard, horrifying. Ace flag, nepotism. Gabe Neesmith, uh, freshman. Good Lord. He might be the best player here. Hold on. <laughs> the freshman. Starting, good starters. Uh, yeah. uh, Curtis Givens, uh, Danny Miller, Donnie maybe. I don't, could be either or. And Robert Wright. Sounds like a college basketball point guard for certain. Six year <laughs> vet. Yeah, so Queen, I mean Queen looked like an absolute hoss, but he's also six ten playing in high school, so that's that's mm. hard to judge sometimes. I've been burned plenty of times by the Christian walkers of the world. <laughs> I'm looking now just at these most talented teams, uh that Ike sent. It's really not even close. There's a huge <laughs> gap. Like number two is Chet Holmgren and Jalen Suggs, who are great, but the first team had seven guys drafted first okay. round. There's other Michael Porter Jr., Jonte Porter, and Marjan Bochamp. That's the third best team That's on here. That's pretty good. Jordan Poole, Jaron Jackson, Tiger Campbell, and Brian Bowen. Brian Bowen was supposed to be that deal out of all those guys. Went to Louisville. Bad decision maker. Lonzo, LaMelo, LiAngelo, and Onyeka Okongwu went 35-0. and and Harrison Barnes and Doug McDermott tore up Ames, Iowa. Listen, I, I'm looking at the picture of these fellas. <laughs> and Ike put this picture <laughs> in the video. I know this team was giving folks hell on the AAU circuit. Absolute hell. Which team? This Ames, Iowa team. I can't the, imagine oh, yeah. playing this team in high school. I can't imagine. This team was absolutely <laughs> dominating anyone they went up against. You don't think 6A Ames uh, ball was just a a fight every night? James Kohler, I feel like I remember that name. Uh, Michael Weber, Riley Stuve, and Harrison Barnes with Dougie McBuckets. Yeah, this team. I mean, not, not a bare arm on the team. This is a big big 4XL t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> and I don't like what he made Harrison Barnes stand to the side like uh, uh, Franklin on Charlie Brown. 
But it's Iowa. I know, I know the game. <laughs> this is something I did not realize. Tristan Thompson, Avery Bradley, and Corey Joseph all played in high school together and then all went to Texas. I don't think I ever knew they all played in high school together. No. Found that out literally just now. No, I didn't know that either. Where's, were Thompson and Avery Bradley in the same draft? Yeah, then Thompson. Yeah, because Tristan Thompson was the Kyrie draft, right. and that was the year after John Wall. So I think, he, yeah, he must stay one. Extra. Or he was just a, a yeah, year younger. Was younger. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I feel like he was younger. But that, probably so. Listen, they got best team. They got St. Vincent and St. Mary. Come on, man. They were cold. They was all right. I mean, this this Lawrence North Indiana team with Mike Conley, Greg Oden, this is where it's like AAU teams are sometimes better for this. I know Titus was on mm. this team, too. Shout out Mark Titus. This team, as someone who was also in high school when they were in high school, this is the team. <laughs> this, is for, this is for certain the team. 53 consecutive wins for Barnes and McDermott. Back-to-back state titles. Just hell. Hell. Tough. 3 4 Oak Hill. Rondo and Josh Smith. What was Caitlin Clark doing in high school? Is this what she like She started kicking ass immediately as a freshman. What was she doing in I'm high sure school? I'm sure it was like that McDermott team. I'm sure it was very similar. <laughs> Her and Cameron Brink. She, I was fine. She, but she was Harrison Barnes and Doug McDermott on that team. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah, hold on. This oh, the, <laughs> this list that was sent to us, <laughs> the Oak Hill team, key players, Rajon Rondo, Josh Smith. That's all it says. For the St. Vincent, St. Mary team, they list the whole starting five as if four of these That's people I, matter. That's why I said they got St. Vincent, St. Mary on here. Come on, man. You remember Willie McGee? And <laughs> I don't disagree with their inclusion, but I, I do question why they listed the whole starting five for this team and only this team. <laughs> Just not mention LeBron. Showed him in the picture, but did. yeah, keep playing. Romeo Travis, Drew Joyce. They say that's where Bronny about to end if he stay in college. Duquesne, because that's where uh, I think it's Drew Joyce just got the gig. Okay, I was wondering why you said Duquesne earlier. That was ain't no other good schools playing this time of year. He, was, I don't know why he go to Kentucky. I mean, it does stink. You guys do like players that stink. Uh, listen, it's actually the opposite. That's what makes it disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> the players are actually very talented and go on to do uh, immaculate. They do. Things. They genuinely do. Yeah, I would also put, like, any high school Kareem went to on that list. I don't care who his teammates were. Uh, you want me? Joey Smith? Uh, uh, Tony Smith, his brother? There were about um, nine Oak Hill teams that could have been on there. <laughs> IMG? IMG ain't got no uh, rosters to put up against? Well, they was playing against Bishop Sickle. So I guess that don't really do. Like, Oak Hill, I don't even know if they had other sports. Like, I... I don't even know if they had a school. They were very much just like you come mm. here to play basketball. And also, I, that Oak Hill team with, with Rondo and Josh Smith, that wasn't the best team they played on in high school. The Atlanta Celtics were. Uh, Randolph Morris' That's team. That's right. We all remember. That's right. Just one last thing on the schools. As I thought, I just know they're all from Minnesota. Did somebody, was Chet Holmgren, Jalen Sugg, was Paige Beckers also there? She may have. Not on the men's team, of course. She should I have mean, been. Honestly. But, uh, I was like, we just saying like best five. They're like, yeah, no, Beckers was across the hall going 38 0 for four straight years. I just know they're all Minnesota, but I don't. Yeah, Minnehaha Academy, a real school, of course. <laughs> like, I can't wait till every single alum listens to this show actually whispers with the most prestigious. I'm like, all right. <laughs> the prestigious mini ha ha. Suggs was like, this basketball stuff's fine. I'm really trying to go to the, to the NFL. And they were like, hey, you're pretty good at this other thing. Maybe maybe you should focus. This is, he's like, but what if I want CTE? And it's like, son, we should talk. <laughs> we should really talk. Yeah, that chat team should be on here for certain. But yeah, that was... They were all also on the football team. Chet and Paige Beckers were also on the football team with Sug. Chet in the red zone, just it's like Colley <laughs> Stein throwing the hand yeah. up. Yeah, Chet home rec- eighty-six catches, eighty-six touchdowns, eighty-six, 86 pass interferences yeah. drawn. Yeah, eight for eighty-six. Uh, but speaking of football, we did have two trades. You only put one on here. There were two trades. Uh, you had the Stephon Diggs trade. I have the Hassan Reddick trade. And the only reason I wanted to bring that up mm. is uh, a lot of Jets fans who are thrilled with this trade, and I'm here to say they should be, but mm. 
This is a team that has spent two first round picks in the last two drafts on edge rushers. And they've gone over two. Um, and I don't want to hear anyone come to the defense of McDonald. He's like 30 years old already. Like he, well, I'll just say uh, Johnson. I'll give you McDonald's the one. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, about. Johnson. Or I, I, I like. I think Johnson's been fi- like a rotation player. I think he's been fine. McDonald's. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Johnson. But even still, people talk like, "Oh, we were going to take him at ten. We can't believe he fell." Well, we see why he fell. Uh, no one else was really all that interested, and he's been okay at best. McDonald looks like a swing and a miss. Uh, and also, their best pa- pass rusher just signed with the Eagles for probably less than they're going to have to sign Reddick for. They got a good pass rusher. The, one of those aggregator accounts tried to came up with a quote. Don't know if I was eating the trash or not, but it was just like in Philly, uh, they were getting kind of tired of him always trying to chase sacks. You mean his job? The thing you pay him to do? Yeah, uh, yards. That's why they traded Stephon D. Yeah, exactly. Catch merchant. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> This guy wants to win football games and and help do it. Want to run after the all, all he want to do is run after the catch and tweet. <laughs> Thinky me, I'm looking at Jermaine Johnson, one time Pro Bowler. That doesn't mean anything. Will McDonald? None. None. Does not. So I'll give, I'll, again, I'll give Johnson the Will McDonald. I think Johnson's been better. TBD. Johnson's for sure been better than Will McDonald. Uh, and they only took Will McDonald because the Patriots traded their pick. And the only reason the Patriots were ahead of the Jets is because they traded for Aaron Rodgers. So they traded their pick to the Steelers, and the Steelers took Broderick Jones. And the Jets, for some reason, were like, all right, we'll take an edge rusher. Um, didn't work. One year in, still early for the for the Mac man. <laughs> the 30-year-old, yeah. Uh, they got a really good pet. Like, I'm high on Hassan Reddick. I do wonder why this is his fourth team in the last five years. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think the first was the Cardinals, Cardinals was and the Panthers. Cardinals. Throw, yeah. As I was saying, yeah, and the Panthers throw them well, out. He's good man. with the throw Panthers. Them out. Like that's where he kind of uh, resonates. Mm-hmm. I think I think they finally let him do what yes. he's his, let him chase the quarterback. Thing. <laughs> they ruined him. <laughs> yeah, be selfish. They weren't playing with strong safety like the Cardinals were. So yeah, I, the Cardinals you throw out absolutely. The Panthers they're pretty dumb. So them not re-signing him feels on brand. Yeah. I'll, that's a wild uh, The Eagles, he was there two years, was really good two years. Uh, I think he's still going to be good. I don't know that I'd rather, because they're going to have to pay him. I believe it's the last year on his deal. I don't know that I'd rather trade picks and pay him than just pay Bryce Huff, who was the Jets' best edge rusher. Granted, he wasn't on the field nearly as often as Reddick was, so that's part of it. Mm. But it's also Bryce Huff's much younger. He's been he was undrafted. He's the he got the biggest contract any undrafted non quarterbacks ever gotten this free agency, and it still wasn't nearly as much as I imagine Reddick's extension will be. That's where it's like, what's the process here? Because now you've traded next year's I think two. Obviously, it's not this year's three for fifty one. Was the Huff deal? Right. And I seen uh, Reggie White signing Green Bay for four for sixteen. Jack. <laughs> Literal Jaime Hawkins Jr. money. Well, who, who won the deal? <laughs> uh, TBD. Because, yeah, what was the... Yeah, they essentially traded, what, Huff and a fourth? Oh, I thought it was... To get ready. I thought it was multiple was picks. Because it, yeah. it was the pick next year and the it year after. Actual trade. What if Huff was only getting busy because all those all the tackles that Jermaine Johnson and Will McDonald... Possible. Were I'm sure he'll, he'll figure it out in Philly. <laughs> uh, will he? No Fletcher Cox. <laughs> no. Just Jordan Davis and uh, who's who's buddy? Well, it's just, it's, I've heard more than enough up and down stuff about Jordan Davis. Carter's Carter, been Jalen Carter. the goods. Yeah, Carter's been the goods. Jordan Davis, I don't even know yet. No, I don't know either, but I still have faith. Reddick to the Jets, and, yeah, for 2026 third rounder that can become okay. a second. But I don't, I don't think they have the criteria. I thought I read 10 sacks, which he's done... Every it feels year, like right? Him, yeah. Um, so yeah, twenty six isn't as bad as twenty five. I did think it was twenty five, um, but still, now you've used two ones and a, a potential two to get one and a half good edge rushers. That doesn't feel like the, hey. the best of business. I mean, they still got a draft pick in this draft, though. They could take another edge they rusher. They can get a four. Yeah, they can. <laughs> they can, that's what I'm saying. You're not. The, uh, you're thinking too limited, man. But yeah, that. What if it, yeah, at ten they just Jared verse. I think Verse would be their best edge rusher. I'm very high on Verse. <laughs> I think Verse. You can never have too many. This draft has been so quarterback centric. 
at when everywhere I look, no one's high on any of these quarterbacks. Like they, they're starting the Penix is actually the best guy conversation this week, which it's like, give it a rest. He ran a four, four, which no one knew he could run 40 <laughs> yards straight. <laughs> so once he did that, they're like, Oh, he was fast too. Yeah. I don't, it's been so QB centric. There's been no talk of any other position, even the wide receiver conversation outside of cut to it, subscribe rate review. Uh, outside of that, like the, the national general conversation, I really haven't seen anyone say anything of interest. It's all been about the quarterbacks. And it's like, I feel like in any other year, Verse is looked at as like a top five pick. You know what I mean? Like a, as one of the elite guys. Buddy, uh, UCLA has multiple really good players in this draft. I would say Latu is the one I keep hearing people. Yeah, Latu. Uh, someone posted one of those charts. So many fucking charts these days. A lot of people charts. Post- the only ones I like and appreciate are like the wide receiver route ones. Right. Those are very helpful to me. But yeah, it was like edge rushers and... It was like their speed plus their production, something. And all I saw was Latu was right next to Chase Young in the very top right. So I was like, ah, listen. <laughs> wow, well, it's tough because I read, knowing what we know about Washington's training staff, I just, I, I can't believe they handled his torn ACL sure. correctly. I can't, I just can't believe. But now that I, he's got what, like neck issues? Yeah. Putting the, the rap on him now. So I, yeah, that was obviously. Uh, I did see. Related. Yeah, Latu's got the injury history. Yeah, I think I'd still just. I think I'm just good with Dallas Turner, man. Only edge I've scouted. <laughs> um, feel good. About I it. think he's gonna be great too. I I think I'm just not. I can't remember if it was Oklahoma. They were playing somebody where Verse was like apologizing mid play for how much he was dominating some right tackle, and I was <laughs> like, yeah, this guy's insane enough where I think I might take him first overall over Caleb. I think I would take Jared first. It's time. <laughs> the, the interesting. Oh man. I wish I, I wish I knew who to give credit because I, it was interesting and also feasible. Like you said, if it is just going to go quarterbacks, the top four would the bears and Ryan poles just say, we're going up from nine to five to get Marvin Harrison a second. Like the rap is they're going to stay at nine and take Odunzi yeah. or a pass catcher. If MH2 falls to five, why wouldn't they just be like, we got more than enough. We still got draft stock. We're just going to jump up nine to five. I don't even know what it would take like for a non-quarterback. So I don't even feel like you'd be paying out the nose, really. And would my Bears just be able to throw, what, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, MH2 at Caleb Williams, which – Is that the best starting spot for a quarterback Cole ever? Komet. Like, has a Cole Komet solid um, – who did they pay to running back, though? Uh, Swift. Was it Swift? Swift? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care for that. <laughs> I, it's pretty good. It's also like, man, oh, man, they really going to compare what Justin Fields had. Not, not, I'm not even talking about the talent, but I'm just talking about the other players around them and be like, you see, Caleb Williams did it, and it's like, he did, but if MH2 might be your wide receiver three <laughs> to start out, like, or Odunzi or neighbor, right. like whoever. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know. I just, I'd like that. I thought that was interesting. The Bears and Chargers have also made a trade this offseason, too, which the Chargers don't have, like, their whole front office, everything's new. Mm -hmm. So having that connection where they really haven't built connections with anyone else yet could could be it. I saw uh, Josh post the Monty Ossenfort video from last draft where he was just... Josh is a freak, man. He posts all type of stuff on my timeline, all hours of the day. He's constantly posting. Austin Ford. Yeah. Austin Ford in bio. <laughs> he posts that video. I would pay, I don't know, $300 for the live feed from, like, if I could just go pick to pick to each war room. I don't know what I would pay for that, but it would be more than uh, my family would be comfortable yeah. with. <laughs> like they, yeah, we only get the the name picked and then the delay and the, yeah, got our guy. Got no, I want it all. I want to see the other things. Like fuck, that's our guy. That's what I want. Monty to see. was cooking, like just absolutely cooking uh, for the Paris. All that trade with Houston and trading back up to mm-hmm. get Paris, like just cooking to the point where, like, I'm shocked they're allowed to use cell phones. Not. Obviously, it's modern technology, but I I did think everything had to be done like it, 
And if I were a GM, I'd want more secure. Well, yeah, like landline. You know what I mean? Like I would want. I don't listen. We're trading multiple right. furs here. I need to make sure we're on the same fucking page. Like I can't right. have my. You, you said the twenty twenty the five or the twenty six, and you're just like, rur, rur. yeah. I think he. I think we're getting MH two for a conditional seven. Yeah, I'm, listen, I've got all other 31 GMs on a group chat is what I've got. <laughs> Post a picture of Marvin Harrison to say, you like what you see? See who he thumbs up? The Cardinals have emphasized this image. Uh, Chargers have emphasized this thumbs image. Down. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I think I'm texting it out. He's constantly like, what's the time? How much time do we got? He's making calls. He's moving and shaking. So Josh was like, what if they trade down and then trade back up for MH2? That makes a lot of sense, too, based on the fact that they literally did it a year ago. Like trade from, what, four to, what, six or something? I don't even know. Yeah, they probably wouldn't have to go down. Well, it would be six. Depends on who's getting it that pick. It would be six Giants or it would be or... 11 if it was a Vikings. Because mm-hmm. then you could trade 11 That's... and, like, you're two for five and then you still have that second first rounder from the vikings I, yeah i don't but for two picks i don't, would i need it to do a two to, like to jump up two picks to get a non-quarterback no i'm saying if you're going from 11 to five if they, I'm, I'm looking at six though my bad yeah I'm, 11 I'm, to five yeah six to four yeah 11 to five yeah not to, yeah I, I don't hate yeah going bound or uh, jumping back to jump up since like Jalen, I've seen it like for the Falcons, like if the Bears want to get ahead of somebody, if they don't go up to five or something, jump back to whatever, 10, 11, 12. I guess Broncos could technically use a quarterback. Broncos have talked. If they want to go up 12 to four. Yeah. It's four still, I, like, I do think three is where, and I know it's my team, but I do think the Patriots have that for sale. And I've seen a lot of, do they just trade back to six, which is something I hadn't even considered throughout all this. But if the Giants are going to give you a haul to get up to three, especially if they think the Vikings are looking more at four than three, and if McCarthy's right. your guy, you want to get ahead of them, we just go to six, get whatever else they're throwing at us, and then take neighbors? I don't hate that. I think it was six to three exactly, because it was the uh, Sam Darnold, Quentin Nelson. And I think the jump from six to three to get a quarterback, it cost them three second-round picks. So you would definitely go from three to six to get neighbors and three second round picks, right? Yeah. Or would you? Yeah. Especially. I would, I would do that in a heartbeat. That rebuilt the Colts. Every, <laughs> the Colts were like, they're just a quarterback away. It was from that trade. And they blew it, but. Well, it'd be, it would be the six and a two this year, right? Like it's not just, yeah, because you can only trade three years out. So it would have to be a two this year. Hmm. So yeah, if, if then, if you take those twos, I don't know where uh, Penix is going to fall. I've seen a lot of him to the Raiders. I know Mina Kimes, th- Kimes thinks that's a perfect fit, which I understand. With the first? With their first Yeah, round? that's what I mean. If he goes that high, obviously, like I'm still very all set yeah. with Bo Nix. But if he's floating around in the 20s there, <laughs> can you trade one of those twos and a future pick to get back into the first round? Because I still think we still need another two. Like I'm not... <laughs> not punting. We, we have some holes, you understand. Right. So if you can leave the first <laughs> round with neighbors, panics, and then you still have a two to work with. Some future. Yeah, games. that's yeah. now we're cooking. I'm looking at this. They've got Penix going 23rd, but that's to the Vikings. Sure. So if you assume that the Vikings have already, like they moved 11 to get their quarterback, then yeah, Penix would probably, and it wouldn't cost you much to, you'd be comfortable going like from 34 up to 22 or whatever if Penix is still there. Yeah, it would depend. Like if with that pick yeah, and then the extra, depends, the yeah. Pick. But yeah, if it's that, I'm all set. Yeah, I'm all in. You could just stay and get Bo Nix at 44, though. No, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you could. I, I, he might go at 12, man. Like, I cannot wait. Like, nobody loves any quarterback outside of like the top. Even one, I think I've, it's enough division on Drake and Daniels to where I'll just say people seem to love right. Caleb after that. And we're still going to see six quarterbacks go in the top 15 right. picks. And that's where it's like. None of them are going to be good. <laughs> I can't wait. Caleb's going one. I still think May's going two. I know there's a lot of smoke around Jalen going two. Or Jaden, excuse me. Jaden. I, until it happens, I think May is locked in at two. That's been what it's been for 12 months. 
it feels like. I mean, last year at this point, Levis was going two, and Richardson was going one. So I don't, I don't, I don't believe right. anything. I can't wait till McCarthy goes one. Two. Bears are just like, ah, I mean, he, those twelve times a game, he was cutting it loose. <laughs> Five yards per attempt, man. He was really spinning it. I think Caleb only has met with the Bears, and is and the Bears have only met with Caleb. Like they're that's done. Mm-hmm. That's lockstep, yeah. But yeah, anything after that, I mean, I, again, I think I'm operating under the belief that May goes two, and anything else would genuinely shock me. And yeah, Patriots have at the beginning of free agency, Mayo was like, "Oh, we're spending big coin," and then he walked that back. And he also said, oh, we're locked into a quarterback at three. And he's walked that back. So I, I fully anticipate a trade at this point. They trade, they move up. <laughs> he's like, no, we're definitely <laughs> going to get Caleb. But yeah, Stephon Diggs. Uh, Stephon Diggs is a Houston Texan. Man, I love this trade so much because it feels like old school classic or trash. Like, I feel like the immediate reactions were like, oh my God, this is such a good slash bad deal for the Texans slash Bills. <laughs> And then more information came out. And I feel like people flipped. They're like, oh, this is actually terrible. This is actually yeah. good. I was like, baby, these are the trades I love. <laughs> I don't, I ain't seen a, a chart yet for <laughs> Stefan Diggs. Yeah, we just, we just going off what we know. So going off what, was it classic or trash, Mick? I'm pulling up. I want to get the exact details. Uh, they traded next year's. Of the trade Next itself. year's two. Uh, yeah, the 2025. For second. Diggs. And then they also. Took Diggs's money from next year, gave it to him for this year, and put him on a one-year deal. So they shortened his contract. Um, <laughs> Is that a good idea or bad, though? I think it's though? the best idea I've ever seen a team have. I was trying to think about it after this. Most receivers have a two-team shelf life. Like, most receivers do not make it to that third team and cook. Terrell Owens was like the only one who came to mind. You can't even say it about Moss because he did not cook on the Raiders. Wasn't his fault. But there wasn't a lot of cooking. <laughs> hey, listen, a thousand yards then, I'd call it cooking. He was doing his best. Low he temp. Doing... <laughs> Low temp. There's a reason yeah. we got him for a four. I think keeping Diggs, keeping Diggs on a one-year deal feels like hey, you've got to be on your best behavior for us or you're just not our problem anymore. That seems like the smartest idea you could possibly have. Diggs has shown he's great year one, and then it eventually is just like, man, I really hate this top three quarterback I play with. Like, I can't. <laughs> This fucking bozo. Can't live with this shit, though. And I don't even think he's wrong, necessarily, but I see how that wears on a team. And, I mean, the beginning of last year, before the season had started, it was like uh, Diggs walked out of practice. He showed up just to leave. And then they're like, no, he's fine. He loves it here. And then, like, the whole season happens. They keep cutting to him on the sideline, like, clearly furious to still be on the Bills, (laughs) turning his back on Allah's light every day. Uh, (laughs) They're like, man, he always turns his back on all of us. Like, he's never been up here. Hey, no, him, him putting Josh Allen in the torture rack, but they just play. They just they just play. They're guys. Them only being able to get a two, not even in this draft. Kind of says what the rest of the league was also on about Stephon Diggs. That's where I'm at. The thing with like the Texans are saying it's like, well, why would they do that? They had it for three more years. He wasn't gonna play on them three more years. That's just how that's just we know how it goes. I don't care if he had four more years at a very fair. I don't care if he had four more years at top of the market right. rate. He's probably going to want to reschedule that or re uh, negotiate that at some point. So you do the one year. I wouldn't have hated two years. Just essentially before we have to really decide on paying CJ Stroud. Because their trio right now, Collins, Diggs, and Tank Dell. like Josh and Hayden were saying, that, yeah, you don't really have to rush Tank back now from his injury. Not that you should ever do right. that, but. <laughs> You feel like you got some solid guys aside of that. The two for Buffalo's side next year was me wondering, like like you said, with the two teams, if we look up and Diggs is cooked, we'll be like, man, they stole sure. a second for this guy. And it didn't seem tenable. Like, it just it wasn't right. going to work. So a second anywhere, I know they don't have a second this year. I think they've got first and third. And then I have the seconds next year. So I imagine they'll go multiple receiver. But I've seen it's like outside of Stephon Diggs, what's this uh, Bills receiving room look like? I'm like the same thing it looked like outside of Stephon Diggs before. They didn't lose. It was like they lost him and Gabe Davis. Respectfully, we all watch Gabe Davis every week. He's a five. Like I think he'll be good in Jack- yeah. Jacksonville, right? 
like as a piece of the receiving core, I think he'll definitely be fine. But they were like, man, they lost their whole receiving core. I was like they just they just paid a tight end, spent a first round on another one. Got a second for Diggs, who maybe he's cooked, maybe he's not. Gabe Davis. I'm sure they were, they wish him well in Jacksonville. I don't think they broke up this all-time receiver. No, they didn't. But even when, and this is from doing episodes with 89 for the last couple of years, like even when they're not hitting Gabe Davis, he still had to be accounted for. Because when he wasn't accounted Because hands don't matter. Because hands don't matter. <laughs> when he wasn't accounted for, that's when he would hit like the 92-yard touchdown on the first play. For so sure. that's where it's like, yeah, they, they don't have anyone else with that skill set. Not necessarily, again, all-time receiver, but... They don't have that kind of take the top off. Khalil Shakir looks really good when he does get a chance to play, and it was year two for him. Is he ready to step up and be a number one? I feel like that's quite a leap. Um, and Kincaid, I think Kincaid has become, like I think they're going to try and make him Travis Kelsey, which is the market inefficiency, tight ends with bad backs and college house, Gronk, uh Kelsey, Kelsey <laughs> Kincaid, is that really the move? Man, you find me, I, I want to see your RAS score and your vertebrae, son. <laughs> I don't need to see your tape. I don't need. I don't care who came to your birthday party. <laughs> I don't even care how many catches you had. I just need to see your, oh, 9.8, huh? He was born without C5 <laughs> and C6. <laughs> we found our You're ready to catch 110 passes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Buddy, yeah, uh, at ninety-eight miles an hour from seven yards away. Listen, they keep trying to put every. I mean, everybody, not just Josh Allen and Mahomes class. Let's see, Stri- you strip Mahomes receiving core, and <laughs> maybe strip some more, <laughs> some more wide receiver news. Uh, Mahomes is like, can I just have like, uh, what happened to the uh, Reggie Wayne man? You just play for a guy for t- uh, ten years. Whatever, whatever happened to when the When I saw the Rice news, I was like, oh, that's Kansas City's wide receiver one. You can't be uh, uh, who's but Sky Moore. I've, I've never heard his name in the season or outside of the season. Oh. I don't know that he leaves a room uh, <laughs> during the week. Uh, Rashi Rice getting in trouble with Johnny Law, like their previous wide receiver one oft, often does. Yeah, that's. I think Mahomes lit up like Christmas morning when he heard that report. Well, I mean, just as a team, I was like, that's exact. That's the adversity they needed to run back to back to back. That's all they needed. Yeah, idiots. But I was like, we're we going to see. Because they, or if the Bills, I do wonder, are they saying, okay, we are go, like the two tight end, they'll draft, I mean, at least one receiver. They might go first round and third round. I'm looking at, they got them getting A.D. Mitchell in the first and... Maybe they don't have a third round pick. Maybe, maybe the Bills don't have any. That would be pick. troublesome. That would be quite troublesome. They okay. So they don't have a third. They have twenty eight sixty okay. and one twenty eight. So maybe you go wide receiver like your first two and figure it out. But I wonder like, are they going to go tight end and like kind of commit to run? Like James Cook was kind of running. Is that the change they want to make? We see it gets cold in January. Two tight ends. You'll still need some receiving room of course but if we are trying to make a pivot to play some january style football without the 30 year old receiver yelling at us for whatever we do <laughs> was Diggs wrong for yelling was terrell I, that's the whole i was like if you look at the individual issues terrell owens yelled about <laughs> he was right a lot of them and you know i know he was right because every locker room he had a faction sure every single somebody at least multiple people were like hey man I mean, <laughs> Kidna, Kidna ain't that deal. Maybe, maybe he's honest. I, don't, I agree with the way he said it, but his message isn't wrong. Yeah, I, what you have to say, sir, I will defend <laughs> your right to my death. Yeah, A.D. Mitchell seems like a perfect fit. I don't know if he's going to be there at 28. I'm very interested to see how the wide receivers fall. Like, I know there will be some teams who pivot away from wide receiver in round one because there's presumed to be so many in this it's like oh we can hit that in round two or three and then there's going to be other guys who are like no we need malik neighbors at five like we need to do it now um so that's where i'm very interested to see how that falls out because i've seen the bills projected to trade up a lot uh like they got brian tankathon has brian thomas going 17 i don't know if they have enough Seen a lot of Brian Thomas. I don't know if I know if they have enough to go from twenty eight to seventeen, especially if they already don't have a three. 
Uh, but that'd be interesting. Well, I mean, it, it would just definitely probably take your two this year, right? Right. Then you're going one. So you better love Brian Thomas. If you're going probably 28 and 60 to get up to, what, 17? Maybe you can get a fourth or something back next right, year. Right, because they – I'm looking – they've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Are they 13 receivers in the top two rounds? Some of these guys are going to stink. Awful. Uh, Some of these guys are going to terrible. stink. The Bills draft picks in this draft, they've got 28, 60, 128, 133. Um and 144. Everything after that, they've got five picks after that. Those are all lottery tickets. I, I'd say that for any team, not just the Bills. Uh, that's the 25th pick of the fifth round, the 28th pick of the fifth round, oh, the 24th right. pick of the sixth round. Like I know the number 160 seems low for a, a 300 pick draft, but it, it isn't. It just isn't that low. Um, so maybe they hit on one of those picks past 160. It just doesn't seem super likely. Even 144, it's the ninth pick of the fifth round. It's not like a great pick to have. Um, so, yeah, they, they really need to nail 128 and 133. And as someone who's been studying this draft since September because my team stunk, I do like a lot of the names I typically see in that area. But that's where it's like, do you really want to trade up to 17? I don't know. You better love uh, – you. Yeah. It goes without saying, you have to love who you're getting. Because, again, they're a team that, like, they're in and around that mix where they are, their Super Bowl window, and they're, or they have a Super Bowl window of this year. We think we can win the title this year. So maybe we, the fifth, the fourth we use to get up there, they probably wouldn't even been playing this year. But we cannot do that to move up for Quentin Johnston. Sorry, Quentin Johnston. No. I do wonder, like, they've got Troy Franklin going 47th, which I don't, see a world where he's on the board that long. Um, so that, like, if you just want to stay there, A.D. Mitchell could be there at 28. Like I said, I don't know how this is going to fall. I see Jerzon Newton at 27. That's not a wide receiver at all, but that's entirely too low for maybe the best defensive player in this draft. Trade up for Bowers. Yeah, not me, buddy. <laughs> I... I'm back to daddy. I, I, still I keep seeing a lot of Bowers to the Bengals, and it's like, how far is he going to fall? I don't think it's going to be that far. Well, this is – I can't wait till I – after I've railed and railed against tight ends, I can't wait to draft out. I'm like, it's the 24th pick. You're not going to take the best tight end we've all ever seen in college? I ain't talking about Mac, like John yeah. Mackey uh, from like the 50s that the ward named after. But it couldn't be – like I, I – they got him going 10 to the Jets. I was like, man, y'all trust Tyron Smith blocking for Aaron Rodgers if you want. I feel like I w- y'all just let Makai Becton go, right? Like, I feel like I would get some type of line help before I'm looking for a t- – or another end. <laughs> uh, I thought the, for the Bengals, I thought it was going to be – yeah, trade T. Higgins for I don't know, 32 or 31 or something. But then also, yeah, use 18 to get Bowers, and then you still have the T. Higgins. So basically slot Bowers into T. Higgins and still have a little extra capital. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but. If he there, yeah, if he there at 18, yeah, I'd have to. <laughs> Jamar Chase and Brock Bowers getting thrown to by Joe Burrow. I'd consider it. I think they should trade T uh, and take Brian Thomas, get, get the full LSU uh, locker room going. Just get the game. Yeah. I don't hate it because I'm a. I don't. I don't know what the. Mar- I don't think I would trade a first for T. Higgins. I think if they could get a first, you already would have been traded. A hundred percent, and that's why it's like I just as I look at like the guys that pop or seem to pop as a number one. I feel like he's a great number two, which is not a knock to him, but I would just much rather have him playing off of. Lad McConkey, no, or, or number one, or whoever. Maybe McConkey is. He got about to be the Panthers' number one. So, figure it out, buddy. That's where, like, if you're the Cowboys, you already have CD. I like. I would trade twenty four for mm. T Higgins for sure. What the reason I went for the Cow? They just draft and develop they do. well. So I would just. I think they also <laughs> they might be needing that for a quarterback next year if they just don't want to pay the one they have for whatever reason. But. Some of these other teams, you could. Oh, I, Cardinals trade 27. Draft MH and just get T. <laughs> Higgins to immediately go number two off of him. Pay him while MH2 is cheap. We're neighbors or whatever. That's that's real team building right there. 
that's all. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Unless you're paying for a running back. I don't know. I just don't. I don't think it's none in the first round here. Thank no. Heavens. No, I saw an article. Can't remember who wrote it. It may have been um, our very own Hayden Winks, but somebody was like, this mm. This running back class is a lot better than it's getting credit for. And I was like, all right. All right. I'll never know. I could just pay DeAndre Smith, uh, Swift $20 million. I don't see any in the <laughs> second round here either. Uh, Jonathan Brooks. There he is. Good. Jonathan Brooks at 56. To the Cowboys. <laughs> 1500 yards. Feels like something they will, in fact, do. Uh, (laughs) Soon and very soon. But we finally got confirmation. Oh, we didn't talk about the A's. Yeah, the A's uh, don't have a team. (laughs) They don't have anything. They don't have players. They don't. (laughs) They have players. They're just like, oh, you was good, but was you wearing that wristband? Out. We're sending you down. We're sending you out. Oh, you're OPS in uh, 12,000? <laughs> oh, but you had on that... Oh, sorry. You didn't want us to move the team, which we had already decided we were going to do anyway, huh? Well, this is on. This is surely on you, the players. You'll pay for At it. At a point, the other 29 owners all look like huge pussies. Manfred specifically looks like a huge pussy. <laughs> Say what you want about the NBA. They would have forced the A's to sell this goddamn team. They would have planted some some evidence against, I think it's Fisher. They would have planted some evidence against him, forced him to sell for quite a profit. We don't even know his name. That's how bad the press is. We should have, like a terrible owner, we should know their name. Yeah, Get him out of there. The non-Oakland. And it's I've seen a lot, like, the Giants' hands are cleaner than they should be in all this. Like, more, they should be getting more heat. Mm. Because, of course, they're for this. They want to have the entire market. They want to push out the other team in the Bay Area. And I get it. I like I, I get why the Giants want to do that. And I also get why they should be getting a lot more shit for wanting that. There's plenty. Like, I, there's no one undecided. You know what I mean? There are A's fans and there are Giants fans. Yeah. That, that's not going to change. And the Giants, by the way, yeah. neither of these teams are fucking from there. Uh, <laughs> neither of them. <laughs> I was gonna say, I guess that you're trying to get the the new fan because yeah, everybody now has picked right. their side, and they will decide to. I, this it's tough. I know a lot of people stay with their team. The way the A's have just handled this, I don't know how you could possibly still root for like what they've done, the way they pulled, it, it, like the way they've handled it. Teams move, it happens. It's only ever happened. It's going to continue to happen. But just the way they've done it, going what Sacramento for three seasons, yeah, two seasons. They won't have a name. They'll just be DAs. And then you, like, in one of your, this is their last season in Oakland, right? Sacramento's next, next year, year or two years from now. They'd move them sooner if they could. You can't even let, uh, they'd be there tomorrow. You can't even let the young guys, it was like, was it Ruiz and a couple of other, what, ca- what do you care what happens right. this year? They don't. They've never, they've we, stopped caring it's for like 15 you, years. They never care. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's disgusting, honestly, like how it's been handled. Oakland as a as a whole as for sports fans if you're from from Oakland and you're a sports fan you've watched the the Warriors move to San Francisco like just out of Oakland to San Francisco that's probably worse than the A's moving to Sacramento man you can't move across right, the across the bridge like we, we their whole thing was we are not them and they're like no actually we, we are uh, the Raiders and I understand there are plenty of people like well the Raiders aren't from there they were the Oakland Raiders. They embodied Oakland more than anyone could. They're in Vegas. And now the A's. Vegas at least wanted the Raiders. They don't even really want, like, the mayor of of, <laughs> of Las Vegas was like, mm-hmm. we're all, we don't want anything to do with this. We got F1, yeah, man. Like, yeah, we're... And so it's like, you've lost, not like, it's hard enough when one of your teams leaves. You've lost all of your teams in a five-year span. Your big three. That's devastating. Awful. Like, I, I know people are only focused on, like, the players and the billionaire owners. But it's, like, so many people, like, I've seen it in Boston. Boston is a different city than it was when I grew up in. And a lot of it can be attributed to the success of the sports teams because of how much money mm-hmm. that makes for everybody. I understand the, the billionaires profit the most by far. But the people who work at the concession stands, the people who work security at these places, the people who sell tickets in the ticket office, 
these are all your neighbors. You know what I mean? These aren't billionaires. There's more of them than the yeah. billionaires. You're way closer to them way than <laughs> the bars <laughs> around the establishment. Like everything around the garden is completely different. Everything around Fenway is completely different than how it was when I grew up because of this. The crafts and what they've done with Patriot Place and built up Foxborough. They took zero taxpayer dollars to do that, by the way, and they should get credit for that. They did all that shit themselves. And they've made it this place to go even when there's not football on. That's Foxborough, Massachusetts. No one gives a fuck about Foxborough, Massachusetts, respectfully. But it's not a place unless the Patriots make it a place. Like, that's just the truth of the matter. This, like, people, all I've read for the people who are like, fuck Oakland, it's so shitty. Uh, they've, they've, look what they've done to that community. Yeah, look what the billionaires have done to that community. They're the ones who've taken the fucking jobs away. They're the ones who've created the local economy. That's not the people's fault. No one wants to, like, live, like, no one chooses that. That's usually thrust upon people. That is not a choice right. people make. And the people are always the ones who get blamed, not the ones doing it. And it's it's infuriating to watch. Like, I, Oakland fans, when you look at old A's games, those crowds are going insane. When you think of Raiders fans, you mm -hmm. think, I might lose my life because these people care about this team more than they care about my existence. And those Warriors teams, we laughed at Brooklyn. We'll laugh more at the Nets now, like we already done. When they try to do that weak ass Brooklyn chant, when that Warriors chant legitimately caused runs to happen, like mm -hmm. literally had an impact on those finals. That's how live those crowds were. Even once they moved just across the bridge, of course they can still physically get to the games. They're priced out. They can't go there. And I know that's happening everywhere. But to those fans specifically, who had a huge part in that team's success, obviously I give more credit mm -hmm. to Steph Curry. I think that's fair. One but A and B. Fed, yeah. Like you think of how the Seahawks defense used to say they fed off long Marshawn Lynch runs from Oakland. You know what I mean? Like it all it all comes back. To, that's the if you want to know how a, a fandom, what a fan base looks like in a single person, it's Marshawn. Like they've done this all to Marshawn Lynch essentially, and it fucking stinks. Like say Sacramento really latches onto this team, they're not no. gonna stay, and say they don't care at all. Like there's. You get that revenue for a couple, and then they move to Las Vegas, where they will be one of 250 million things mm -hmm. to do. And it's still the like the ones that's moving. They're not selling the team, right? So it's same, it, the same oh, yeah. owners will be in Las yeah. Vegas, correct? So are they still gonna be sure. shit. I don't matter where you are, because that's your mentality, that's your ownership, that's your how you conduct your business. They're gonna be shit. And it's just like the history, like they've had cool players, cool uniforms, all that. And now they're just the A's and they'll, they'll be the Las Vegas. Are they keeping the name? Have they been said in Las Vegas? Will they still be the so, athletics? Does from what know? I remember last year, they were supposed to file paperwork that they were moving last year. <laughs> and the paperwork was like filed late and incorrectly. And owners across the league <laughs> were like, we've never seen it handled so poorly before. Like take the fucking team from this guy. He's making like all of you look bad. I don't care if you think he's costing right. you money. Like I know they're like if and when they get sold, they'll go for a hundred times what he paid. Imagine if they were fucking decent <laughs> organ, like a, a decent ball club going to Las Vegas. Somebody would pay big bank to get bigger bank if they were not buying into a house they had to completely renovate because you've just let shit fall apart for. This is a team that was making and contending like multiple World Series in mm -hmm. the eighties. And now we're in the 2020s, and they're fucking out of there. And like you said, it just stinks. Yeah, it just the, the sucky part of sports. Yeah, I mean, I've I've obviously never had a team leave, and I think, you know, I I hope I'm part of a fan base that won't lose teams. But I don't know why anyone could think that that couldn't happen to them. I know Atlanta's had the Thrashers come in and out. That was a, a big story at the time. The Hawks aren't from Atlanta. Like, that was a St. Louis team. St. Louis has lost the Rams, the Hawks. Braves from Milwaukee. And from Boston, too. But that was because Boston had too many teams. Yeah. So, yeah, the Braves are from Milwaukee. Like, I, it's just shocking. That feels like black and white footage type stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this team was the Bean Eaters. And then they moved. And then they were the Grass Growers. Right. And then they became the – like, you know what I mean? Like, that. it feels like old-timey shit to still see teams moving. We know the market sizes. Oakland's not a small market. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, it seems like they, the 
they did the reverse uh, walkout last year where they sold out for one game, being like, listen, this isn't us. This is very much ownership. Mm-hmm. Why would we put up with this shit? We know they're taking the team. And even when they are here, we know they don't give a fuck. That's like the part of Moneyball, the movie, that always bothered me. They focus all on, like, the cheap shit. And even they show the owner, they're like, hey, can we have $100,000 to get this reliever? And he's like, no. And it's just like, that's the bigger part of the movie, right. is that even the 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 best right. portrayed version of this guy, he still fucking stinks. It's like, that's why they've been losing, what, 100 plus. They I feel like they get decent player and then trade them out. And again, the decent players you get now, you ship them down because you disagree with what they're saying. Even if they're just pointing out exactly what you're doing. <laughs> like, they didn't say, fuck the owner, kill him. It was, just, what is, it was just representing the bar that was like, keep the team yeah. in Oakland. And they were like, nope, you're cut, you're traded, you're demoted. We can't have that. We have, we have a reputation around this city to uphold. Yeah, and it's like the whole Bay Area, this whole offseason, San Francisco included, has gotten all sorts of wild press. Being like, oh, players don't want to sign there because... It's a city. And it's like, well, we were just in San Francisco during that. And this was five years ago at this point. But during that Raptors uh, Golden mm. State Finals, it seemed like the most average city I've ever seen. You know what I mean? I know the world's changed since 2019. I'm not here to deny that. Mm. But I, I was hearing similar stuff back then, too, where it was just like, oh, San Francisco is so dangerous. I didn't feel it. Yeah, I was like, I'm a big fan. Uh, I haven't been a lot, a little steep but, yeah, for my liking. Fan. But other than that, <laughs> a lot of hilly, big hilly. Uh, at least now, I'm, I'm just ready for. If this is where we're going, then yeah, in a hundred years, all thirty teams, there'll be forty teams in four cities. Right. If this is just where we go on, maybe it's maybe it's the way it should always been. Maybe it's always where we were headed, but. It also makes it that much funnier that an NBA team moved from Seattle to Oklahoma City. That's where I was like, well, I, I, I don't even know, man. I just don't even know. And Oklahoma City fans have been great. They genuinely have been. Tremendous. They were Tremendous great fan. when the Hornets went there after Katrina and were playing out, like some games there. They were great. They showed they deserved the team. I don't know if they deserve the team while taking away from Seattle fans, who we know are great in other sports. Like, we know Seattle has great fans, especially basketball fans. They love basketball in the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah, I don't – even adding teams, I'm usually hesitant on just because I don't think there's enough talent to do that for any of the sports, really. But I, I'd much rather that than seeing an entire fan base. Oakland's been particularly disturbing to me just because all three teams just fucking left town overnight it feels like like obviously the baltimore colts literally doing it overnight remains the gold standard for how shitty it can be but at, right now if you're an AIDS fan wouldn't you just prefer that yeah rip the band-aid yeah, off just man. don't be there one day this this has been a, so dragged out it's been happening over the course of years and they've handled it as poorly as possible i guess that's worse they get uh, i'll say best case if they would if he would get there and immediately sell to somebody serious but why would it? they're about to just right. print money i mean print right. more money so why would he yeah i don't I don't know. We're with you. Let me buy the A's, man. I have, <laughs> I have. I'm bringing back the elephant, the green, and yellow, pro- MC Hammer, all that. Oakland's just such a cool place that, like, the culture of Oakland spreads through the entire country, whether people know it's from Oakland or not. And so to see them get like unnecessary, it feels like they're being punished for no reason. It's just like to go from a city with culture like that to Las Vegas, who definitely has sure. a culture, but. Stark differences <laughs> yeah. uh, in in their culture. And Vegas is culture from any other city, yeah. to be fair. But uh, salt in the wound. But by the next time we record, we'll have, we'll have listened to We Still Don't Like You, I believe is the official title for album number two. I thought it was just We Still oh, Don't Trust like, you. It ain't about liking you. We, yeah, we just don't trust Sorry. you. I know yeah. they also don't like uh, the people talking about it. Uh, yeah, We Still Don't Trust You. And Metro was like, listen, I know this looks like a deluxe. It's not. It's a completely different album. So we got that confirmation from him directly. I don't know if that means it's going to be a different vibe entirely. I don't know if he's doing the the rap and R&B play again based on the title. I don't know how he could. Just deluxes of every other side. Like, no, we just hated him some more. It's just... <laughs> I would just say it could be the same exact album. Just give me a full length version of Princess Diana, and I'll be like, "This is the best album, Grammys." 
That's all I need. Low bar. Yeah, I don't know what to expect. I'm still spinning the first one. Uh, I took a break today to listen to some Herbie Hancock, as one does on a Sunday drive. The uh, cock man, yeah. He was humming. I call I call balls on strikes here with us. He was he was humming. <laughs> as Herb mm-hmm. usually does. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I saw Apple Music's doing monthly raps now. I got that notification. I, that. I got the. I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I only kind of skimmed the yeah. yearly one. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I was so, like, I don't. This is what you listen to yesterday at twelve p.m. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't think this is gonna get you the uh, edge over Spotify. I know you're trying to catch them, but I don't. I don't know if uh, more frequently is why people like this function. I'm minutely. <laughs> what, what lyric are you listening to right this minute? But I'm excited. I will be there. I will be ready to listen. And I'm just fucking ready for the NBA season to end. Bring me the playoffs. This It's felt ex- extra long this year. Uh, the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. Uh-huh. I thought of many different things to say. No Diddy has swept the nation. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to be the most recent one to say it. <laughs> Oh man, I think it was Alexis Morgan that said that. If if like NBA athletes started saying no Diddy, would they still get fined? Because was it Jokic? Like guys were gotten fined. Yeah. For, like was it pause? Yeah, Jokic. Yeah, pause has been fined by a couple people. I think Jokic's the most recent. I think he's the last one I recall. If they start saying no Diddy instead, is that is that double the fine? Or I is think it no it's fine? much worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. Much it's like worse. pause. Pause isn't like. Obviously, homophobic for certain. However, it's not attributed to, like, someone accused of horrible crimes. Across the spectrum of criminality, by the way. Not even just this. Yeah, across decades. Across, decades, yeah. across all sorts of lines. Uh, Coast. <laughs> countries. <laughs> generations. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's where it's like, yeah, this... Uh, funny. Don't get me wrong. Funny. But I... I for sure, I think the fine should be much harsher than <laughs> pause. Burns dropped there way too smooth. I said, hold on there, big dog. It's in the, like, it got hold in the there. lexicon yeah. quickly. Probably too quickly for some of these things that have been right. alleged, uh, we will say. But it's, it's there, there now, I guess. Yeah, nothing. That's why, I mean, you saw the literal pause on my face because I was like, no, I can't say that. Not not because like, I think I'd get fired or anything, but it's just like, I not not pee very unpee <laughs> extremely un-pee. so yeah i don't even remember what i was oh yeah get the get the long ass regular season out of here i think i'll say that now to y'all uh going back to atlanta for a tough game six going back to philly for a, a down 3-0 Cannon and bead and nick nurse closed the deal we're down 3-0 to Embiid. like i I deserve everything that happens to me. Uh, trade the, man, trade Tatum for uh, Devin Vassell. <laughs> Not even win beyond. Just blow the shit up. Get, get so yeah. hard. Get me there. flag and get me uh, AJ quickly. Let me root for the hometown team. Let me. <laughs> yeah, we can just run that over uh, real yeah. quick. Tobias Harris content to yeah. dribble it out. The Sixers sweep the Celtics. I don't know Celtic. what I would do. I don't know what I would do. All the... The previous six years of beating them would mean nothing immediately. So immediately. Oh, so fast. Yeah, so I fast. I can't with that kind of foolishness. Soon and very. I can't soon. imagine. But yeah, get me, get me to Friday so I can listen to this album and get me to the playoffs. Those are starting relatively soon. It's the sixteenth. Yeah. Oh, that's play in. Yeah, it's not my business, but it will know who we're playing by then, at least. I was say, listen, if it's the Miami Heat, gonna be your business. Oh yeah, it's it's my like I'll I'll be rooting for the Heat in that game, but also it could be the Magic. Like, it could still be the Pacers. There's a lot that could get settled right. at the bottom there. So, uh, give me the Wizards. April, yeah, April sixteenth. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> listen, I, Jordan Poole uh, can't miss. He's, he's spinning Drew Holiday inside out. I'm willing to risk it. <laughs> we will, yeah, April 16th. First day of Sheeden, Tyler. Subscribe now if you haven't yet. Uh, underdog NBA. 
Nick, you got a new baseball show. Where, where do people find that? The Sheet and Tyler of, of multiple clips we've seen for the past three months. The very same. The very same. So, April, that's the plan. That's the plan. If that's your sort of uh, mm-hmm. vibe. Mm-hmm. Fuck it's like that. this, but somehow more Celtics talk. Uh... <laughs> Not wrong. Um, not wrong. Uh, definitely go subscribe to that. YouTube. Uh, dot com slash at UDNBA. For sure, click that. Smash it, even. Smash that subscribe button. Mm. Yeah, Section 10, back. Uh, Historically mm-hmm. back, from what I understand. Big back. And only teams that matter are still cooking. Because uh, it's just fun to talk shit to a Yankees fan uh, weekly. It's just something I need in my life. Even when the Yankees are better. That's more what I'm used to, honestly. That's that's that old feel. That's that Familiarity. The 90s, uh, <laughs> <the> 90s feeling. <laughs> They're restoring mm-hmm. the vibe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll be back next week. See ya.